from the team did his job in supporting the rest of the roster. Shut down that fault. Then here in the two versus two, able to find the down onto Handy and Vidiking. Fortunately, not a whole lot he could do in that position. So flexing their muscles. Welcome back to the B stream here at Six Invitational 2024. We've done another mix and match today. I'm here with Sam. What's How going on, buddy? buddy? Yeah, you were actually one of the first people I casted ever at a live event. I think it was DreamHat Valencia all those years ago. Yeah, it was. That was quite some time ago as well. Ain't Pretty fun event. <laughs> <laughs> and now here we are back together. And you know what? Sam's even come dressed out for the occasion. What is this all about? Uh, you know, non-biased caster here. You know, I, it was a good fit. DZ gave me some stuff a while ago. I figured with Bolo playing at the tournament, maybe I could slide it by, but all I can't get anything I'm past you. All I'm hearing is, is your loyalty is easy to buy. <laughs> Let's take a look though at the group just so you can see what's been going on. Here is how things stack up for today in terms of our schedule. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have got Dark Zero versus Fear X coming up right now. And next up, it's Team Liquid versus W7M. Before we close out the day for Bleed versus M80. A day of very thrilling games, no doubt, leading into a very exciting conclusion tomorrow for some big elimination games and speaking of elimination games this is really squaring up to be something that leads towards that for fear x as you can see at the very bottom of the standings right now coming up against dark zero in second place i believe if dark zero win this game as well they actually give themselves a shot at jumping over g2 and taking first spot because those two teams play tomorrow yeah and that is going to be a bout that we are really really looking forward to but we're going to cross a few fridges Bur uh, first darian fear x is obviously going to be one of them they haven't had that great of a tournament so far here they are on your screen it's going to be Matthew red good boy a uh, good boy rather Arakaze and good boy, uh, Arakaze <laughs> and Demic. Uh, yes. But yeah, I mean, you know, through the history of Rainbow Six Siege, Jerry, we've seen some things out of these players. We've seen some highlight moments from people like Ren, from people like Arukaze. But this event, it just has not been working well for them. Arukaze currently sitting at the top of the heap with a 1.0 rating, and he's still negative. Granted, it's pretty close, but when your entire team is already in the red, things are looking pretty dire for them in the current yeah. moment. It's very hard to find a positive stat about these guys right now. You touch on it, every single player is negative. They're minus 16 on entry. They've got one of the lowest round win rates in the whole competition competition unsurprising when you're at the bottom of your group of course that's to say it's been rough despite a little bit of the kind of light hope for them coming into this they had a three-week boot camp out here in brazil they've got a new coach behind them a brazilian one dark as well used to coach mibr for 18 months prior to about november time when he then joined this roster and actually asked him you know what was it about these guys that got you excited and he was like well they're clearly one of the top teams in korea i can see the potential i can see where there's loads of room for growth and improvement and despite their results, I do think this team has grown and improved across the event. We're seeing them pull off some brilliant things. There was a brilliant like four and one split execute onto board of top floor yesterday, where Mephi on the Amaru just completely deleted the warden that was sat behind Art Wall, and that was it. They won the round off the back of that play. We would never see that from old Sandbox or current Fear X mm -hmm. in their regional leagues. So you can see the growth and development and plays they're bringing to the round, but a lot of the fundamentals start to slip as series wear on, and that is what keeps on costing them. Personally, I don't think Dark Zero are going to be the team that are going to let this slip and let them get away with it. And speaking of, let's have you talk about your boys. Oh, man, <laughs> it's Dark Zero. We're going to save the best for last. And yes. I know who you want to talk about, all right? <laughs> NJR, Pambazoo, Canadian, and as everybody knows, Bolo back in action. Jason Doty, an amazing player. That is a hammer lifter. 2021, actually, TSM, I do believe. Might have gotten that off by like a year, but it doesn't really matter. We all know how damn good this guy is at the video game. But last and surely not least, at the top of the heap right now for Dark Zero, our British boy, Nafe. You guys just can't stop importing our boys, can you? Oh, we got to steal them, man. You got Spoit, you got Nafe, you got Citizen. Like, you just can't stop. And to be fair, like, Nafe has come in as a, a really interesting role where it's part IGL, support as well. He's helping out Canadian with some of those duties in leading and calling for the team. But despite being this more backline player, he's basically top rated. He is the dog right now. And what I love is I've seen him and Bolo over dinner a couple of times and over lunch. The banter those two have got going, the relationship they formed is really wonderful to see. And it feels like the vibes in this team right now are ripe for a really deep run in the tournament. Oh, man. Well, do you see what we have on the docket here, Derry? Yes, I we, do. We got some map things to talk about folks skyscraper chalet and clubhouse is what we have in front of us here specifically though skyscraper and clubhouse des are the things that stand out to me these defensive win rates are insane 
70% on Skyscraper and Clubhouse. I think he's like 71%. They are the two most defender-sided maps at this competition so far. But looking more at the stats around these two teams and how they've played it, Phyrex haven't played Skyscraper since stage one. They have almost nothing for DZ to go off of. And DZ, despite getting 7 0 on this in Atlanta by loss, who of course oh, wow. we know went on to make a grand final run. Before that, hadn't played it since the end of March. Mm -hmm. So both teams have got, you know, nine months of kind of coverage and secrecy around this map that I think can lead to a very explosive and chaotic game, which arguably is the thing that VRX don't want, I think. They've been a little bit chaotic, a little bit messy, and surprises from DZ, I think, could upset the apple cart here. I think most of us are expecting a 2-0 coming into this. I'm hoping we get some competition out of VRX, but it's a big if as to whether we see that. Most definitely. Everybody at home, Derry, saying, uh, well, at least 95% of them saying that Dark Zero is going <laughs> to yeah. take this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The biggest uh, social poll difference I think I've seen this entire event. A Maverick ban. That might be the first one we've mm. had, at least, that I have seen this event. I think prior to the two brow nerf, this would then absolutely mandate a two brow ban to come in on the other side, and you may well see still see it uh, still see it being a thing. Mm -hmm. But with the recent changes, the nerf that came through to two brow, maybe you get away with it here as well. It's kind of trying to bait Dark Zero into having to ban it away. The KB coming in first. Last one is going to be the Azami, another one of those big power operators that we keep speaking about, alongside the Solus, alongside the Fenrir, alongside the two brow, alongside. It feels like an endless list of things at this point that we keep on going through. You just can't ban them all. Yeah, we got the power five right now, you know. So, want to see how they try and utilize some of these, even though they got a zombie off the board. But as you said, there's a laundry list of other things that they can just toss in here, like Solus, like Warden, you know. There's just so many damn good operators on defense right now. It's really difficult to try and dictate exactly what you want to get rid of. But obviously, these teams have brought it down to the wire here. The Kaid ban coming through, a little surprising on top of that. I'll be real. But, I mean, just trying to hold up a couple of these walls. Wouldn't be too, too hard with other things. More than likely, see some Bandit come out and things along those lines. If they do even want to concern themselves with it in the first place. As you can see, Dark Zero obviously not concerned with it at all. In fact, this is more than likely going to have them open up quite a few different angles, especially for Pamba Zoo's Miras. Just saw on the other stream now that things, spoilers, I want to give you to the end result. Oh. So three seconds, you're going to mute the stream, you're going to find out now. Ten has just been won by face. 7-5. Wow. Bliss cannot help but go to like the Five max number of left. rounds of regulation or into overtime. I think they've had one map the whole competition that has gone 7-4. Everything has been 7-5 or an OT end. Oh my Heartbreaking for them, but phase with a good win there and one that they sorely need to get on the board given their slower start to the competition. Here we go though. Let's get focused in on this round then. Arakaze straight across onto the Monty. Something we've seen them employ a few times across this tournament. I think when teams are feeling a little bit... Mm, apprehensive about the possibility of them getting decisive round wins. It can be a nice thing to bring along. Chuck it at the front, have it be the spearhead, collecting information, making sure you're not getting shot in the back too much by Dark Zero. But the big thing I'm really looking at is that Ying. You don't really bring the Ying unless you want fast, rapid executes. So you've got two different styles of kind of attack uh, possibilities coming out here, where the Ying is that much quicker one, the Monty, the much slower. For me, it feels more like getting everything around that execute is going to be the focus to so a slow start, but a fast end from Fearx. A lot of value sitting in the basement floor skyscraper right now from Fearx. We got like three bodies around this area. One outside, a couple in here towards the barbecue. It's going to be a good boy that takes out Canadian first as they're trying their damage to clear out these roamers. The operator list dictating that they'd really want to try and take things from Black Stairs slash the balcony over on the far end of the site. But they're trying to concern themselves with what Dark Zero is doing down low as of right now. And at least to start, it's working in their favor. I think you have to really as well. There's a Solus on side. You just know that as soon as you try and get that diffuser down, there's going to be someone below just like, oh, hey, I see you impacting the floors, mm -hmm. breaking through, and that diffuser's down again, and you just end up in hot water. The Monty, of course, not able to put that shield downwards, so it's of <laughs> no use there. Absolutely, and Canadian, one of the best in the biz when it comes to that. As we all know, he's a big fan of Pulse and Solus by proxy. Mm -hmm. So looks like Fearx does want to try and make that adjustment now after they got that pick. Solus down, won't have to worry about any of that <laughs> verticality coming through. It's very slow and controlled so far, right? Like, I'm looking on a... We've got a second screen. We are blessed as cast as we get a top-down view on the left-hand mm -hmm. side. And eight players in the server have not moved for about 15 seconds. Yes. Because Dark Zero are like, okay, are you guys going to do anything with this 5v4? Or are you going to keep just standing still and then deciding what to do next? Like, we've got to see them get some momentum going. And the problem is, Fear X have a history in this competition of throwing 5v3s, even 5v2s, or even in general, man advantage situations. So even when they get ahead... 
I still find it hard to get excited about them closing out a round. Oh, man, look at this setup right here, Derry. They've like opened it, up the entirety of T, opened up the entirety of karaoke. This is going to make it really difficult for Arakaze to try and find a place to place this case. Smeffy is going to be able to at least find one onto Bo over here. Oh, gets what? a second one, almost a third <laughs> on the transfer. This case is going down inside of T as well. Arakaze should be able to secure this. It's NJR and Pamba doing the two versus three. That's clever as well. They've got right inside of sight and just gone off to the spot that's a little bit covered out here by gold and managed to get it down. Oh. Monty's up, but how has he given that one away? You've got a Monty and a man advantage. He's the strongest thing going at that point. But instead brought down to a two versus two. I've got trauma from their previous games at this point. It feels like it could still yet go against them. 15 seconds for Dark Zero to recover this one. Out up the stairs they come. Rim finds another. It feels like they're going to start strong here, but NGR finds one. Won't have time, I think, to get the kill and the defuse down. Good boy. Just got to hold and wait. Hold and wait. Got himself a couple of seconds. Now makes his move. Gets the close. It's close, but Fear X take round one. Very well done from Fear X. Their offenses have not looked all that spry throughout the tournament, but that one right there, I think, addressed accordingly, especially, uh, you know, with that old coming in from Dark Zero down the stairs with that Solus. They needed to make sure that they got that off the board before they tried to move forward and get that plant down. I also really appreciated them quickly finding an answer to where to put that case down, given the circumstances of the setup on that top floor. I mean, there's so many angles for them to worry about quite a ser uh, scary circumstance. For me, it wasn't even just that. That was absolutely great, and I agree with you there, but for me, that's the kind of play you wouldn't see coming out of Sandbox or Fear X historically. Mephi being able to get himself through the single drum wall, get down get two kills at the back of a candela and draw the attention of the mirror that's not the kind of thing they're doing i'm starting to see a trend where mephi's actually now becoming this air quotes backstab player i mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on the example of him using the amaro on border it feels like whilst the rest of the team is focused on getting set up for the execute they're happy to have him be this backstab player and that has not been the case historically so again it's progress it's not yet really generating results but we are seeing a better fear x turn up than what we've had at the two majors and many events before that absolutely you have to abuse that presence if they're going to pull their pressure over towards one portion of the map and they're going to leave a little gap like that especially with that lmg of gang just yeah. let that chopper sing right <laughs> Able to take down two. Almost got the third on the mirror there as well, which would have been... Oh, if it had flicked onto the head of the mirror as well, I'd have been like, mate. You and mate. I would have stood up immediately and been like, <laughs> okay, all right, Fear X. So that's the game we're playing today. Indeed, okay, indeed. Okay. Wrong day for me to wear the jacket, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be taking that off in a few rounds, just like slowly <laughs> like, yeah, I'll we'll jacket that. Sorry, huh? <laughs> yeah, gifted merch? No, no, no. I don't know about it. Yeah. No, no. No idea. Don't even know who these guys are, actually. <laughs> the North American team. Yeah. I've seen them. And never in a million years. <laughs> Good boy's going to work his way in down low. Love this here. We got the skeleton key that's going to try and assist with tearing up this ceiling. And obviously, by proxy, you're going to apply a lot of pressure to Dark Zero's setup. Big way of doing it now. You haven't got vertical nades in the game anymore, or up nades, as some tended to call them. Mm -hmm. Instead, you have to play things a little bit more traditionally. And in fact, when uh, Jack in the, or Fresh, and oh, cool, Jack were friends like that, when we were in the green room the other day, he was like, who do you think is the most picked attacker at the tournament? We were all like, hmm. I looked down the list, I had to pull up the list, because clearly I could forget some. And I was like, is it Buck? And he was like, oh, God's sake, Derry. It is Buck. He's the most played operator. I think because of the nerf to nades that we've seen and the need to make defenders uncomfortable, given how easy it is to defend with the current roster of defenders in the game, Buck suddenly is just skyrocketed in terms of not just effectiveness, but also pick rate. Absolutely. And it just goes to show you how unbelievably important verticality is in this game. Buck's mm. the only one that can do that. He's the only one that can go underneath a site and actually strip the entire flooring out from under them. Yep. Sludge can't do it. You can kind of be cheeky with some Rotero drones if you really want to, you know, get into the nitty gritty of Rainbow Six Siege, but you really just want Buck there, and it makes so much sense why you're going to continue to see him throughout this tournament. These Buck players mean so much to how these teams can operate. It's maybe not quite as pacey as what you sometimes see from other teams, but the work being done by Fear X overall from below is great. The nades being used oh. by the IQ up top to get rid of Evil Eyes, for example. Doesn't stop Nafe just finding run out the window, though, leaving just a little bit too much exposed there on the Flores, and Nafe all too happy to oblige. It's going to be run down. Not exactly the op you'd want to Obviously, lose earlier on into the round as well. So, if they Rin dispatch as many of those Roteros as they could. Our boys going to make an adjustment here. Arakaze mm. going to try and get some fire going here inside of Terrace. That really is the thing to watch is that gadget use from Arakaze because that's going to be the defining factor. That's the execute in this round. And sure enough, they start making their push forward, but the Fenrir shoves them back. A second for Nate, but two quick kills in succession from Fear X down to a 3v3. Good, good boy also going to fall. The Darks are holding out well for now. And Canadian out of the shadows brings down Arakaze. A 1v3 for Demic. This round looks a little bit closed out, maybe a little bit too slow and composed from Fear X's Dark Zero have adapted well and will bring us up to a one-on-one.
very well done from DZ there. The patience play working out swimmingly for them as uh, they just kind of sit on site and let you know, Fear X do the most work they can down the stairs, but nobody really giving them a look until Rin kind of puts their face in a place that it doesn't really belong. Yeah. They've able to dislodge that accordingly and a beautiful round built off the back of that. I also love the fact that Canadian played that smoke so patiently. He didn't get overly aggressive. He wanted to see if they wanted to try and swing in through Terrace, but instead just plays that edge right there, waits for shot. it to dissipate. It's that nice shot on the M590. Yeah, it's hovered around, like you say. Patience really being the thing that I look at when I think of Dark Zero. And the thing is, Dark Zero of old, like, I'm sure the Dark Zero of today love it as well, but the Dark Zero of old were the team renowned for famously being quite slow in North mm -hmm. America. It was very structural, very strategic. It was like playing chess. And here, in a way, I feel like Fierex are doing the same. There's no kind of sharp, pointy edges. There's no crazy flanks coming in through Shrine, for example, to try and backstab. That round there was about vertical control from below and getting rid of the evil eyes, trying to move a couple of defenders around, and then a kind of all-in flood executes. So right now it feels predictable for Dark Zero. It doesn't feel like they can't control the situation. How that may change as we go back over towards Bar and Kurt to the west side of the map, down into Barbecue and Kitchen. That's anyone's guess, but a one on one. Good start for both teams. Oh, oh, oh. oh and the supernova out as well here for Mephi. Fox and I were talking a little bit earlier ah, on, yes. and he was talking about how he was kind of surprised that we weren't seeing as much of the supernova just because the shotgun is truly, got truly in there, right? insane. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right up there with the M590. Now, I obviously haven't put that feather in my cap in some time, but. I trust his judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Very reasonable. Very reasonable. Arakazi being on the Blitz as well. We spoke about this a lot throughout this competition. All about the pace. When teams are trying to hit fast and hit hard, that's when you want to Blitz on side. To seeing the Amaru and seeing the Blitz to me just screams that we're going to see pace coming out of this round. And I imagine Rin on the Ash is just in case we're going to see a mirror on side again. We've seen it across a couple of rounds from DZ. In case you missed that update, both Carly and Ash can now fracture or shatter those mirror windows with their gadgets. So you're going to see Ash quite a lot this competition, I imagine. Oh, two kills. Nafe, Nitro back on a Demic. Three versus four here in favor of Fear X. A lot of influence to be had. Pam Bazoo, he tried this exact same move the last time. I was able to take out one player. I was trying to assist the Monty, but this time around, good boy. At least good for this. <gasps> oh <Canadian>! my! No <laughs> way! You can't let this happen, guys! He's the oldest man in the lobby! And he's got case control! Oh no, Derry! How can he get away with this? Good boy stepping forward. He's got to watch out to the left. The angle is being held. There's life in danger. Canadian must know that there can be pressure coming in from above. And Rin steps round, wins versus the old man, butts him in an early grave. A 2v2. And what I love about this tournament, we see so many scrappy starts to rounds like this. And it comes down to a 2v2, a 1v1, and there's still half a round to play. It's so beautiful, man. Especially, you know, from the Siege of Old, where I was like, all right, well, we're not really going to have any action until like 45 seconds, right? We're <laughs> yeah. going to drone, we're going to work utility, we're going to do this, that, and the third. Nowadays, people really like these aggressive plays. And, you you know, kind of have to, given how the meta currently stands, right? It's absolutely. You, you get like ground down to nothing because of the amount of like anti play gadgetry that we have on the side of the defenders, that the attackers have to do something a little bit saucy, and we're seeing it time and time again. Nate, he knows that it's going down, but can do nothing about it. Good boy threatening from up top as well. Rin has managed to sneak that one away underneath the noses of both DZ players. Gets a second kill. Rin is saving this round back. I joked earlier to someone that this would be a, a typical life game from Rin when it matters most, and we're starting to see it come online here. Oh, well, Pam Bazoo. A chance, but very minute one here. Very low HP from those early engagements that he had, and this is practically all she wrote. The verticality now coming in. Pam Bazoo's just going to stick it, because why not? That's really your only opportunity there with the two angles that have been adopted. And Fear X, they're going to take the lead again here in round three. Just really smart end of round play. Yeah, again, I've worried throughout the tournament. We've seen them just constantly throw away man advantage situations. And once Canadian bolted over that black stairs barricade and got two, I was like, they've done it again. They've let a round slip through their fingers. But fair and full credit to Rin. Really fought to bring it back. And I felt the last two players left alive there just played that to perfection. Really kind of kept it as a constant 1v1 for Rin. Got the plant down, played vertical, didn't get baited in by Pambazoo running past in the hallway, for example. The days of old, you may not have seen that from this team. So again, it's growth, and that's the important thing to remember. But to have two attacking rounds on a map that, as we've already said, has got 70% defensive win rate, 
this is already feeling like a success for Fear X. Oh, absolutely, yeah. If, the fact that Fear X are already in the driver's seat up against Dark Zero and they're applying pressure like this is truly incredible. I mean, when you look at the stats of Dark Zero, it is nothing to shake a stick at, especially for Nave. A 1.28 right now, he's plus 20, and you still have NJR to 1.25, and he's plus 15. So you practically have two players that are coexisting and performing the same on this squad, yet Fear X, which, you know, for all intents and purposes throughout this tournament, have not really been able to attack. They're taking it to DZ, which, as you said earlier, Derry, one of our more structured teams in North America, they are going to think through all of these strategies to the nth degree. So, for Fear X, this bodes extremely well. Absolutely. I imagine Dark Zero. I was kind of surprised you didn't see attack time out come through there. Maybe a conversation about needing to get a little bit more active around the map. Be willing to trip Fear, Air, Fear X up and stop. Don't let them play their game. Be willing to get up in their faces. Mm -hmm. We haven't really seen them do that. Even this round here, Canadian is going to be the only player I'd expect to see running around off site and trying to cause a little bit of chaos. There is like a extended hold as a group of three out towards the east right now. But Canadian is the only one playing on the vertical downstairs. And I imagine Pamper and Nath. Oh, sorry, Pamba and Bola will both fall back towards site at some point as this round progresses. So for Fear X, not too much to worry about them getting tripped up. They'll have been well drilled by Dark. They'll be trying to get rid of Canadian as they've already done once before. And it's Napier being pitched out in the middle on drum. Arakaze in now. Oh He's my in god, they're already in. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's like no one here. No, there's no <laughs> like, one in Geisha at all. We there's have a there's four players from D every, every DZ uh, yeah. player is the other side of the map, and they've got, they don't know, but they have got full coverage of this west side. Well, you have the mirror set up again, so they're going back to that similar strategy that we saw before, but this is where we saw that explosive play come out from Mephi, where he got a swath of kills over inside of Drum. This time, though, he's trying to occupy the terrace balcony, try and utilize that repel to his fullest advantage, but you still have to worry about Canadian down low. This is the thing that they crossed off earlier in that first round, where they went downstairs, executed Canadian, and then decided to bring things back up top, try and figure out that Mira setup, got that plant inside of yeah. T. So they're really going to have to try and concern themselves with this. Hopefully they've thought far enough ahead, and it seems like they have with Ren now in Kitchen. Yeah, he needs to get rid of the Solus underneath. They know that he's down here Timing. somewhere. It's going to be a shot oh. in the back. Canadian twice playing in this position. It's been caught out from below. In they step. It's not a Monty this time, but the Ossa works in through a breach, getting the plant down. It's a three versus three. No denial from below, and they can do nothing but watch here as well. C4 comes out, gets shot through, and now they've got the Ossa down. They can see everything. Everything. So now suddenly, actually, this position for the Ossa is so strong. Good boy put on his backside, ran into a 2K. I said he might have a live game today, and it's coming out. Stoke Pamba once again left in a one versus two. Pamba Zoo will at least be able to get Arakaze. Oh, he Rin. does have the one versus one now. An opportunity for Pamba, oh. but he hops the hole instead. And Rin has him from down range. And Derry, I just got in my ear. There's going to be a timeout from Dark Zero coming in. I know you're very surprised. Uh, not at all. I mean, 3-1 down twice. You've been beaten on this. Admittedly, I do love the mirror setup they've got used, they're using, right? Reinforcing both the Geisha box walls, having the mirror looking across both sides, and just holding hard towards the east side of the map is really smart. And you've also got that Solus playing downstairs. But you already saw Fear X bring a solution. They brought the Monty. It completely shut it down because <laughs> he literally walked in front of the mirror window like, hello, yeah. planted in the corner of the room, and then that was it. Yeah. And this round, they're very simply opened up the geisha box wall, got the Oster inside, planted it down again, looked at the mirror and gone, hello, and then also controlled that space of themselves because both sites are already wide open. Yeah. So both times, Fearx have brought along a different but equally successful solution. And Dark Zero are probably thinking, well, that strat is not working. We know these guys now love Blitz, they love Ossa, they love Monty. There are lots of shields coming. We need to get disruptive. We can't keep on letting them either take this 1v1 or 2v1 onto uh, Canadian out on the Rhone on the Solus. Mm -hmm. We can't just sit still. We need to get active around the map. Absolutely. I, you know, I love what you touched on inside of that last round earlier on it when, in it when you were talking about the fact that Dark Zero really hasn't applied pressure to Fox. And, and the main thing with that is that the only real, you know, aggressive play that we've seen is in the very first round when Pambazoo hopped out of Temple Window and got that kill on the balcony. That's been it. We haven't seen Dark Zero try and get in the face of Fox or really past that, the strategy really not being able to allow that to happen because Fox has been addressing it in such a positive way. I mean, that round alone, Derry, extremely impressive, especially with the Osa walking in there. A high level of resiliency once you get that shield down, and they didn't have any utility that they could throw far enough to deal with that threat at all. You don't have smoke in play. You, all you have to your hands is nitro cells, really, and you're not chucking a nitro cell 25 meters. I'm sorry. No, they tried their very best and it got shot outright, and that was the only thing they had to respond to the Osa plant coming in. So 
So, again, there needs to be a little bit more coming out here. And immediately, I'd actually quite like the response. Three sets of impacts coming out because they're expecting to see shields again. But this is where Fear X, Zig, Waldark, Zero, Zack. They've gone away from shields entirely. The whole lineup has changed. And now they've got to deal with a new set of problems. Yeah, I'm sure the first one of the first things that Mint talked about was the fact that they need to start bringing Legion. You know, put something out there where they're going to have to try and deal with that animation, deal with that tick damage if they do end up stepping on one of these goo mines. But as you said, there isn't a shield here any longer. In fact, they've doubled down with a lot of really solid gun power. Last time around, they brought the IQ for Mephi as well to get rid of the Evil Eyes from below. This time around, it's the Brava and the Twitch on side. So they've still got the ability, of course, the Ash as well. Lots of things still to deal with what's been brought along. So it's just really good adaptation coming out of Fear X so far. Arc Zero, I said, I want to see them get a little bit more jiggy with it around the map. For now, three of them hovering around site, two playing off, looking towards Canadian and Pamba really being the ones that are playing away and looking to slow Fear X down. If nothing else, that is the one thing that's probably working in Dark Zero's favor is we haven't seen Fear XP particularly quick. Nafe has found himself a lovely little angle out here right through in towards Geisha and has put Mephi down. Not out though, and maybe savable by his team as long as they're careful and respectful of that long angle. Oh, we're recent form right now. I'll tell you what, Rin is the Canadian hunter. Yes, he is. <laughs> time and time again. I think Canadian might finally have the shell for him though, so we'll see if Rin wants to step up to the plate. Ash charge underneath is going to try and force Canadian to move. They got a yellow ping on they him know. as well. Rin's going to try and sneak him behind, but this M590, dastardly in close range. Rin, he's on a timer though. He has to solve this puzzle very quickly. <gasps> Canadian! Oh, Canadian! Oh my! That's more than likely means that Mephi is dead as well. Bleeding out oh. inside of Geisha! I've said it time and time again, Dez. The M590 runs on hopes and dreams. <laughs> and who has more than Canadian? Dark Zero's hopes and dreams in this round. Apparently, massive play coming out. I mean, Nathan, the long angle to Mephi, finally getting the finish off as well. This has bled all the way down to zero. But those two shotgun kills, beautiful. It's not quite like hyperactive play out in the map and really trying to trip Fear X up. They had a yellow ping on him. They had the ash downstairs. They essentially had two, if not three players, isolating one man oh by my. himself. <laughs> I tell you what, who needs rifles anymore? Let's just run shotguns. It feels like it's a new way to play. Most definitely. Would you believe that that thing is actually pellet based <laughs> and not a slug? Because, oh, oh my. You would have thought that was a shotgun too, but it's the SMG alone. Yes, but it's four kills in the round for Canadian as well. It's 1v1 after 1v1 after 1v1, I imagine, is the problem. But I've joked about it a few times this tournament. You know the whole like dominoes being where it's like someone flicks a tiny domino and ends up knocking over a building or something at the very end? Yes. It feels like that with the very first kill because Mephi really was coming in from the south side pressure. So it would have been him and Rin together pressuring in to Canadian. Instead, he's given multiple one versus ones as you're seeing here and all these wonderful replays coming out. And really, Fox there, I think, has shown some of that weakness we've seen throughout the tournament. They didn't really have the enough synergy to close things out. They had a yellow ping, they had pressure below, they had a player swinging in, but it wasn't quite all done in perfect sync, yeah. and Canadian exploited that perfectly. Yeah, it's always the little things with that. I mean, if Mephi doesn't go down to Nafe on that cross right there, that round's more than likely completely different because they can pinch T in a completely different way. Yep. Uh, but obviously the circumstances were a little bit different as Dark Zero, and specifically Canadian, with a lot to say there in round five. And Pamba Goomine, legit. That, yeah. was, that was what saved Canadian mm -hmm. there and got the rest of the kills rolling as well. So two really Really early moments led to what we saw. Going into our last defensive round for Dark Zero, then they're going to have to face off once again against Arakaze's shield. You see the Capital coming along for Mephi, which for me, once more, screams very execute focus. Oh. We got NJR now on the smoke as well, so he can try and deal with that at a longer range. We also have brought Pambazoo again on the lesion for the shield. A couple of impacts to C4 on side as well, so they've brought along some tools to try and deal with what they suspect may be a real problem. Now, if we can see that early round disruption again, just slowing them down, then absolutely incredible. In fact, Canadian and Pamba are once again roaming out towards that side of the map. It's not Canadian playing the solo off by himself anymore. He's got friends. Most definitely. Always better together. Mm -hmm. Zero, we try and play things out more uh, horizontally on the top floor, not so much verticality working its way in, but that also dictates that Fear X is going to have to worry about every single step that they take once they try and don these stairwells. And speaking of stairwells, well, Canadian's holding the house down right now. <laughs> Pamazoo's going to be trying his damnedest to lock things up on this far side here. Good boy with the assist, but the main thing is here, folks, is if they take their time on this, this could be a pretty big issue. DZ does have a little bit of pressure building up right now from a handful of different angles, but Fear X do not want to hop in this building. Yeah, probably get locked into that vault animation as well if you can make use of Arakaze's uh, hard breach opening that's come onto that VIP wall. Canadian very happy to play close, at least for a while. May have to start backing oh, away and a little yeah. bit too slow to back away. 
Good boy collects his man. Pamba was already out of there, I guess, and that's a little bit of a desync between the Dark Zero Romas. Yeah, Canadian with an ill-advised swing there on the house stairs, and he'll get gunned down immediately by the C8. Well done there from Good Boy. Half the round now gone. Fear X do have to make the transition through this central hall that we talk about whenever it comes to this clear. Isn't that right, yes. Des? There's so much utility that's usually built up inside of T as well as drum. Whether it be deployable shields, Jaegers, whatever. The defense has to muster. They will toss it over on this end, just like this laser gate right here. They're going to burn that, try and get Arakaze to assist. As you can see, it's even down the little things that delay here. And Pambazoo is going to continue to add to the pile. Yes, just trying to slowly work their way through, but pace is starting to become a little bit of a... In fact, they've already backed out hard. I just thought they'd hold it at least a little bit longer here. Imagine because they're expecting some form of shrine control coming in from Rin that they thought it's not really a safe place for us to be. So they've conceded ground here with about a minute left on the clock. I think if they'd held it for maybe 20 seconds more, Fear X would have been forced to start making some mistakes, some unforced errors, and Dark Tura could have capitalized. They may have just granted the Korean side the time they need. They are going to end up popping things here for Geisha, but 30 Attackers seconds remaining. Nave, be able to check in at least behind the shield for a split second, but it's going to be Mephi that takes down Pambazoo. And you might be right here, Des. They might have given oh, them just enough time to be able to solve this, but no, Dark Zero, they start to fend them off. A nice shot from Nave is followed up by Bo here as he'll take down Rin. It's a three versus three, but remember, Arakaze's on that shield. Unless he wants to slide this thing and try and take a gunfight, that's really the only way that things are going to go down. Arakaze is going to try and go for the plant. He's got this going right now. Good boy on the cover, but they should be aware of the situation. No, Arakaze is going to be able to steal that, but now it's Monty in a one versus three, something that you Fun. never want to see. <laughs> and Bo get him from behind. Dark Zero, at a bare minimum, will at least be able to equalize before switching sides. I think if, any, if you told me coming into this that Fearx would take three attacking rounds on Skyscraper against Easy, I'd have been like, nah, they'll get one. Yeah. So the fact they've walked away with even three is brilliant. Admittedly, Dark Zero have recovered well after that attack timeout. They were down three and one. They've gone on to win those last couple of rounds. It's looked far better for them. That key change being that we saw Pamba and Canadian out on the roam together rather than Canadian being solo, opera, solo Roma on the Solus. It's worked well for them, at least in one round with a massive 3K coming off the back of it. That last round there, Really slowing down Fear X. We saw the hole coming in. We saw them initially playing out towards the east, back towards drum, back in towards sight. Just Attack really forcing Fear X to ask questions. Bomb. Though, I think many will look at that round and say, how on earth has Naif dropped away through Geisha and Mephi hasn't even been looking at him when Naif has rounded the corner and taken his head off? Mm -hmm. Bit of miscommunication there. Very evident, I think, for Fear X. But we go into the second half. The now it's Dark Zero's time to shine on the attack. I will say this, beggars can't be choosers, you know, Fear, Fear X are looking much better on their offenses than they have this entire tournament, so we will at least take that, won't we? Well, so, Dark Zero now have to, well, do what we saw previously for Fear X. They have to try and answer a lot of these questions across the entirety of Skyscraper, and although obviously the scoreline is, you know, a dead heat, that doesn't mean that this is going to be easy. This site, or rather this map, is uh, one of the most defender-sided maps in general right now. The only one beating it out is Clubhouse. That third map. <laughs> Worth noting, actually, because we were talking about this in the green room earlier. Um, obviously, we saw the recent changes to Two Brow coming that nerfed him, where most teams are now saying he's not really someone to ban, although he's annoying. Yeah. The change that came in was when the freeze is on the wall, and if there's a bandit uh, battery put onto it, for example, the freeze effect wears off. It takes a second and a half for the electric to come back on. What you can do if you want to be very proactive about it, instead trying to play trick is you shoot out the canister and then immediately put down the bandit battery and it then doesn't have the 1.5 seconds. So as long as you are perfect with the timing, it's like that nerf never really happened. But so you've, got to be, you've got to be so tight with the timing is the problem. Yeah, a little bit of team synergy, it seems like, there as well. Maybe a little assistance while you're putting that battery down, have somebody shoot the Zoto, things it's, like It's like that, using you know. a Thatcher EMP and a Breach and Charge, for example. And we saw someone mess it up the other day, and it was like, oh, dear. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> yeah, that's always the hard ones, isn't it? Especially after, you know, whether it be the hard breach has been burned or what have you, that everybody just stares at each other like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't really know. I don't yeah. really know. Some well, painful moments. Indeed. Zero's going to try and wrap themselves around this top site. We've already got somebody on the western balcony. It's going to be Nate that's immediately traded by Arakaze, but he'll at least be able to take down Demic. A little bit of team play coming in as well. I mean, taking out the smoke as well, definitely not a bad one this early into the round. Not quite sure why he was the man getting stuck into a situation there as the go-to entry. You've traded out for the Nomad on the other side, who I imagine has already dropped down those air jabs around the Shrine side, but the oh. Execute might already be coming in. Good boy, just doming Pamba. 
completely blind as well. He stood up into the flash. He saw him for a split second. Uh, but that <laughs> M590, man, that gun is insane. Nerf it, please, man. The range on some of these kills just makes me sick. Oh, man. The instant down is what gets me at those ranges. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like I guess she's a three armor, but my God, or rather three speed. But geez, so crazy sometimes. It can be indeed. Two left then for Dark Zero and a two versus four. Still got a lot of time to play with, but you've lost all your tools to get the job done, it feels here as well. I don't think they even got Geisha opened up, so it's not going to be a threat for VRX. Instead, they'll have to play in through the double window. And that's even with two Exothermics left in that pocket. Just no way of getting these crucial walls opened up, even with a two round side as well. He's out for Canadian. Find one here inside of gold. I don't know if he wants to try and make an aggressive move for this rotate. He does have NJR in tow, obviously. He's going to make an adjustment out for the balcony. Still plenty of time in this round, although obviously under 30 seconds, so they're going yeah. to have to make a decision here pretty soon. But it will give them just the gift of being able to make a rotation if they so choose, and that's exactly what Canadian's going to do. I think he's going to try and attempt to rotate all the way over for Black Stairs. Oh, no, NJR! The influence comes in. It's such a perfect time from Ren be able to get the big kill. Canadian knows where one is, sees one hop outside, but he's dead to rights. It's a good boy, and able to take him down. And once again, we have Fox taking the lead. At what point are you allowed to start getting excited about a Korean team doing well? <laughs> when they win this first map. That's <laughs> yeah. when we're allowed to go over the moon I feel about like there's this. tears to this. Like there's, there's, there's Bliss who like get dangerously close to winning maps time and time again and then just let it slip at the very end. They won one earlier, so fair play to them. Then kind of the tier below them, there's D plus and Fear X, which mm -hmm. just feels can't buy around, let alone an actual map. And then the rest of the tournament, the people who could take maps away from each other. But at least here, it's, again, good to see them playing the way that they are. Is it going to be enough to close things out entirely against DZ? Uh, here, maybe, because DZ have already taken their tack time out. Let's not forget as well. They don't get a second chance to try and figure things out here. It's going to have to be done on the fly. And if anyone's capable enough to do that, it's going to be Canadian. It's going to be Nave coming up with those ideas together. Absolutely. They will be left to their own devices, but that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing at all. I mean, both of these players amazing in their own regards. Nafe adding a uh, lot of spice to Dark Zero, I would say. I've gotten to see a couple of their games so far at the tournament. Obviously, the first one casting here with Nafe, but uh, this has honestly been probably their worst result, is this skyscraper map that we're seeing right now. Past that, they have looked so stellar across the board, uh, especially for Bo. I mean, Bo hasn't played competitive Siege in quite some time, yeah. and uh, he's at least still got the legs under him. Wait till he actually starts getting hot. Exactly that. A little bit of time to Warming to it as well is the main thing to think about here. Of course, no doubt all teams building for this tournament as we go along. It's been a while since International Siege, you know, three months since we had Atlanta. Obviously, some of the regions have had little small tournaments taking place, but it's not quite the same as getting to a big event like SNI, especially when a few of the rosters have made changes over towards the last few months as well. Starting things out towards VIP, at least they're going to get that one opened up. And that really looks like it's going to be a direct to site hit from Dark Zero. Everyone just gathered on this east side. We've still got one player from Fearx. I think it's Good Boy roaming out towards the west. Otherwise, everyone is pretty heavily gathered out towards at least the middle to right hand side. Maybe he's going to be playing this mirror window. Arkaze. <laughs> <laughs> it's a woo! I'm here, it's a ghost! <laughs> uh, somebody push me! Somebody push! Nobody? All right, that's fine. Oh my, Dark Zero! Popping off to see a blue in the kill feed and Fear X. They can't Pamba. buy a kill. Pamba Zoo. Pamba party time, as we <laughs> say in NA. Now, good boys, that flank is just like, oh man, everyone's dead. I've got to come back into four. Like, I don't know where they are. They're shooting at me from the walls. This sucks. Like, what do I do? Admittedly, when I saw the Arakazi thing, I realized what he was doing. One, drawing attention, but two, also making sure that the alarm came up. That, oh, enemies outside the building. Yes, because at the same time, you had Rin doing exactly the same thing on the north side, outside of the VIP. Like hole that had been opened up, trying Very to get players lane. that were on the display window. So again, just a cute little play that you would never normally see from this roster, you know, six months ago. Yeah, absolutely. A little thought behind things, especially when, you know, it's something like that, where you're just like, oh, why is this guy sitting outside? You get shot in the back by another person. Yeah. Outside, Terry. <laughs> things like that that you just want to add into, uh, you know, your, your strategy book there, even if they're cheeky, you know what I mean? Yeah. Four to four here in between these two. Dark Zero, though, with a heck of a round that yeah. last time around. I really love the setup they had around the site, allowing Pambazoo to get very aggressive with those Candelas, opening up the floodgates, practically, for DZ to be able to take that one. Ball's going to start commandeering the mirror themselves as well. 
Last round we had Bowler switch over to the Ash to deal with that. And I'm curious if we're going to see someone else in this round on the side of Dark Zero move over to an operator that can more comfortably deal with those. Answer looks to be no, as I said, but highest pick operator in the whole competition right now. Bolo's going to jump straight over to that one as they do need that vertical destruction, given we're going in towards exhibition and office here in round nine. And we'll be able to deal with it directly, but indirectly, they'll be at least be able to deal with the person playing behind the mirror. Some bees, maybe some fire in from Nave, but it also dictates that they get an angle to be able to apply that in the first place as well. 20 seconds in here on round nine. We're going to be droning things out on the bottom floor. What else would you expect? Just to make sure things are clear, especially for Canadians' sake. He was playing around in that basement area uh, quite a lot on their defensive end, so make sure that Firax aren't doing the same. For sure. And right now, it's a case of fe feeling out on the Dark Zero side exactly where they need to be pressuring. Two players at the top side on Shrine Balcony, a couple playing out towards West, mainly in the downstairs, and then I think you've got Nate holding for the cuts. Uh, inside of Shrine itself, hoping that someone's going to rotate back through there. And could potentially catch out Good Boy, who so far has got himself caught on this side of things. You can see him on the right-hand side of your screen, trying to cause a little bit of bother around Drum, along with Mephi up towards the top side. So that's kind of problem number one for Dark Zero to work their way through. But I see the walls slowly starting to kind of close in around them here. I think he and the players that are hanging around Shrine have got to be careful. In fact, they've brought a third player over. They're really hard holding out towards this west side and wanting to slow Dark Zero down. I like it. Yeah, I love the patience here from Furex as well. They haven't gotten overzealous, not giving Dark Zero any strong looks here where we they go. could get some big kills. But now, as soon as I say that, Pampas is going to try and swing through. So that's <laughs> one to worry about over here on the drum side. So hopefully he's got some eyes in the back of his head on this angle. Did he see him? I don't know that he did. The flash goes away in good time for good boy. As will take down Pambazoo oh. and be able to at least make it back to sight. Nice let his man get away as well. I think he was too scared of Arakazi within the gunfight, but it was enough cover for Good Boy to pull back. However, Bolo has been the hero of the moment in that opening 90 seconds. Two kills, taking out both players on Shrine by himself and has opened up the map for Dark Zero. A man advantage, 70 seconds still to play. They can do this. Most definitely. A lot at their disposal still here, especially in the secondary utility. Need I believe Nave. that's what Canadian is waiting on right now. And yes, indeed. That's come exactly Nave, come. what they need. Come on, boy. Bring those EMPs, Head boy. over here. Let's there get this go. impact down. Next step, can opener. Break in here. <laughs> Straight just, in. Yep, just like your grandmother's kitchen. <laughs> Opened up and that starts to put pressure in now. I mean, damn it, this is a dangerous spot to be in as well. Ooh. Really trying to play right up close and just hoping that someone appears at the window. And sure enough, Canadian is there, but admittedly at a distance. Damn it, the one you want going for this one is 2 and 8, to be fair to him. I don't know. Oh, Has no. a C4 in back pocket as well, but in come the bees. Steps out for the swing. Sees his man, oh. and he wins it out. That's exactly what you want. Down goes Canadian, and they hold on to this balcony at least for now. Bees just sailing over his head and making it to where he had no idea. Mirror was standing Time. full force in that mirror, or rather window. Arakaze here behind the dry bar. Waiting for somebody to try and swing through. Dark Zero, so little time left. We have to get this case down. And they might have found a home. But no! no! The goo mine stops him in his tracks. And he gets gunned down instead. Fear X with another successful defensive round. A great 2K out of Arakaze. And I feel like I'm flipping narratives here. Because a couple of days ago, I'd have said, Oh, man, Fear X and a 4v3. They've got a minute to play. They're still going to lose the round. And I was optimistic for Dark Zero. It looked like they had the right sort of ideas coming together. Just couldn't quite get it over the finish line. Good boy in a great spot as well to win the one versus one, despite being flashed. Here, he was really scared of Arakaze off to his left. That's why he flicks in. I imagine Nate was making the call. Like, Arakaze is trying to peek on me. Be careful, because he has that cross angle through Drum on towards the door. So he couldn't like just full send down to the bottom of Drum and take the 1v1 on Good Boy. There was a limit to how far I could go. And that was exactly the moment when Good Boy chose to step out. If instead it wasn't a classic siege time moment and he kept the angle locked onto Good Boy, a fair 50-50 in the one versus one. Just, again, one of those things where timing is kind of bitten them and Good Boy getting back to site safe made it a 3v3 rather than a 4v2. Yeah, what a game Good Boy is having as well. 12, 4, and 3 right now. And just as a reminder, folks, the only person on this team with a positive rating at all and didn't even have a positive KD before we got into this game nope. was Arokaze sitting at a flat 1.0, Derry, which is truly, truly insane. Especially when the next three follow-ups Demic, Mephi, and Good Boy all sat at a point nine. Truly insane stuff Fear X has been able to do, especially in just the last 24 hours. Again, the craziest stuff for me was the entry, right, coming into this. Minus 16, like one of the worst that we have, if not the worst of the competition. Mm -hmm.
but across these rounds have gone blow for blow for Dark Zero. It hasn't been like every single round they're behind them having to fight back. In a good number of them, they actually start out ahead, which is really impressive. However, as much as the praise of VRX, let's not forget Dark Zero are only one round behind here. They win this one. We're dead square again at 5-5, five and five, and we're going all the way through to 12. I think it's more that VRX is surpassing expectation here is the reason why it's so exciting. Oh, Banner battery down here. As you said, Derry, uh, with that change. Will that still go off? It's not going to zap it. It no, should. No, oh. They didn't pop it. No. They didn't pop it. Never mind. We're good. All right. Well, I know there initially it was just like if you had the fuse already going, it would just explode right after. So you have to click it again now as well. I think if, if it expires, then it takes the full time. If it gets shot, I think it's a different conversation. Gotcha. Gotcha. Understandable. And now this one's still jammed. Come on, boys. <laughs> we, need, we need a wall to get opened here. Like, just one. It would be lovely. And you can imagine how frustrating these little moments can be for Dark Zero as well. Yes, it's just everything getting in their way. It's another speed bump, another hurdle they've got to work their way through. You guys have speed bumps. Yes, yes we do. You do. You Not call, that we do you call the speed bumps? We call them, yeah, speed bumps. Okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you guys might have a really stupid name for them. No, we, we, well, we actually use them as speed ramps because nobody respects them, so. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I like my car, so trust me. I, I abide. I adhere, I adhere to the rules. <laughs> Yes, other things getting in their way. Then over half the round has gone through, and no one has died, I'd argue. One of the more peaceful rounds that we've had in this game may even find ourselves breaching into the last 60, and uh, everyone still stands up standing. So it could be a very explosive end to the round. The key thing to note, Pamba on the Ying. We speak about this an awful lot. Very execute-heavy operator with the EE1Ds raining out. The Grim able to get involved too. Dark Zero have got all the tools here, but they are coming up against three smokes, a couple of C4s. I think they've either been pre-placed or at least been used. Still one in the back pocket of Arakaze. So VRX aren't exactly foolish coming into these final 45 seconds. Good boy. Inside of barbecue as of right now. Nave with the stranglehold oh, on the angle. Very well met. To be able to use that DMR to its full He's advantage. He's going to have to burn Stuns in. out here, and yes, indeed. 30 seconds remaining. Candela's out. I think he's just waiting for this initial smoke to try and burn what? out. There's absolutely no chance, Demic. But Pambazoo, he's good for two. Bo will go down up against Ren, who's stuck at the back of gold. That's what Canadian's good for. Three versus one now, all up to Arakaze to try and shut this down. But I don't think he's here in good timing. No good faith, no info, no nothing to build this off of. And the Nitro Cell, it lands on deaf ears. Three versus one now. Dark Zero have absolutely everything in this basket to be able to take round 10. Yeah, immediately every single player pulling off site. You've got one top shrine, one top black, one on drum. Just no one giving Arakaze an inch to be able to fight back into this. And every second that passes, it's ultimately got to get all three kills to make this work. They are no way in hell going to let him stick it out. It feels instead that we are going up to that scoreline we spoke about. A 5-5 Pamba with another 3K. Been going good this game, bless him. Absolutely. It feels like Pambazoo is required to get three kills for Dark Zero to win an offensive round right now. <laughs> yes. It's actually insane. And speaking of insane, I cannot imagine what that Dark Zero player was thinking when they got slapped off of Black Stairs right oh, there. While he was flashed as yes. well. Yeah. His hand is just right in his face and he just gets destroyed. I mean, we'll see how flashed he was in a moment as well, mine. That was a freebie. This is the one that's a bit crazy, just like... Oh, we can't be skipping. Oh. That's a shame. I would have loved to have seen exactly what his screen looked like in that moment, but ultimately, easy. Get it over the finish line. High five. We get to see all 12 rounds, and I feel like the game deserves it as well because we've seen that real good grit from Dark Zero, especially from Pamba, as you mentioned. Canadian as well. Brilliant multi-kill coming into at least some of the earlier rounds back on the first half. VRX, brilliant first few attacks when they were up 3-3-1. Three, um, three and one. They've let Dark Zero play a little bit of catch-up here, and it's really hard to call which way this game goes. Yeah, most definitely. Dark Zero, I mean, just look at the consistency across the board. It's actually insane right <laughs> yes. now. I mean, the person that's quote-unquote doing the worst is Bo at 6, 7, and 3. I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> if, that was, if that was my rank stag, Derry, I'm over the moon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're all playing great, guys. Keep it up. Exactly. Keep it up. Like, Whereas on VRX, it's a little bit more pointy towards good boy and Rin. Yeah, well, you, uh, you know, we always like to point that out as well. When people start soaking up a lot of kills, well, I mean, where else are these other guys going to go get frags at? It's not like there's a supermarket for it, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> exactly. So that may be the battle here. You get rid of good boy, and last round he was the first one to fall to Nate. Maybe that was the key that unlocked Pamba to march through the rest of the team. A little raid boss action. Mm, yeah, that's it. Not really much of a raid boss when it goes down in one shot, mind you. <laughs> it's very true. I mean, it, it depends on your build, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. Well, we're here for Dark Zero. They start building things up here on the balcony. 
They're not going to be bringing the shield in tow, and that's something that we see happen a lot when it comes to uh, accessing this portion over here. But obviously, they're just going to be worrying about this verticality coming in from Fear X. That's what happens with this barbecue site. You want to try and work your way in and rip things up here inside of karaoke, My. making things super easy for that plant inside of barbecue. This is one hell of a stack on the shrine side, and if that doesn't scream execute a bound, then I don't know what does. The main thing they've got to contend with is that smoke of Mephi playing on the other side, of course. Can drop that on the doorway at a moment's notice if he needs to to run that clock down that little bit further and give his time, team time to react. Pamba's ready, I imagine, as well, with the Candelas, ready to sing at a moment's notice. It's just a case of when Dark Zero pulled the trigger, and it turns out it's going to be now, Stokes. There it is. B's in, as well as the Ying, but this time around, Pamba Zoo, the shoe's on the other foot. Mephi matches fire with fire, be able to take him down. Nadian has to swing in here for the bathroom, but... It's going to take his time. Silence will actually befall the map, all except for that smoke. But as soon as I say <laughs> that, a little ice on the wall Canadian's got to hit him. He's got to hit him. Yes, he does. Mephi is doing such a bang-up job on onto the stairwell. And it's just so difficult for them to try and find anywhere to gain access right now. Yeah. I mean, Nate's been put on oh, ice multiple how times. <laughs> stuns in. Canadian fights through the stuns to kill Mephi on I love black it. stairs. They've done so much onto Mephi. That poor guy has just been sat there entirely. I didn't realize he's second to Canada from the bottom of black black stairs. But I thought both had already gone top. But that's why Canadian was held back a little bit. They wait for it to expire and they push in. So a really good one-man isolation play coming out from Dark Zero. 4v4. No more of those canisters in Arakaze's pocket. They were all dumped onto this door that Bo is facing right now. And the Did he down try and slow them yeah. down. No, yeah, Nape just went down and grabbed yeah. it. So I was definitely going to have to try and transition this soon into an offensive front because, yeah. well, as of right now, Fear X have a solid setup downstairs. They don't mm. exactly know where Dark Zero want to address things, but obviously that breach kind of being a telltale sign of what could go down. Ren looking for some more kills, looking for some more NJR. blood in the water, but NJR, a double kill. They've tried to cover things over here on the restaurant side, but oh that kill actually going to go to Canadian, and so will the second one. There's no way that Fear X are going to have put in this much much effort to potentially lose to Dark Zero in regulation. Looks like they might actually. They've kind of gone from that kind of Korean tier at the very bottom, and now they're into like Oast tier, where you get so close, and then things just crumble when it comes round to more pressurized end of game situations. They do finally take in their time out. Now they're down six and five. First time this game, they've been behind. Yeah, looking like me playing FIFA against the Europeans, man. Just <laughs> you like, have been sweating that in the green room. Dude, it's dude, been hilarious. They have been smoking my pack, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> but I mean, hey, but I'm, I, listen, I'm like Fox. I'm starting to get closer, man. I'm starting to get closer, you know? And that's what matters at the end of the day. This is a great timeout by Fox, by the way, just to try and make sure, well, first things first, you don't want to go leave this map with a timeout in your pocket. That's the silliest thing you yeah. could do. And second thing, second, let's readdress some things here. You definitely had a chance inside of that round. I think the big thing is, is that Fear X a little worried about giving control on top floor uh, you know in those dying moments but as we saw Derry because we have x-ray vision Dark Zero just sent everybody into that bottom floor on a pretty one front assault and just gunned down Fear X at every corner they didn't want shooting in the back by Mephi so he had to be the first thing to be removed but really it was the NJR backstab that unlocked that round for them two quick kills defeated the raid boss good boy disappeared as well that was what they were looking for. So again, a big play from a single player on Dark Zero to unlock the rest of the round. You can look up and down really the roster and saying Canadian, Pamba, NGR have all had those moments throughout this game. And that's the kind of grit and resilience that you so sorely need to make a deep run at competitions like this. It's definitely. Resiliency from Dark Zero as well. I mean, you can imagine how, you know, a million ways how this could have gone wrong from them, whether it just be in game or mentally. I mean, Fox has not looked all that great this tournament. They start doing well against you. You start to overthink things, overcomplicate things. There's big potential that Dark Zero uh, could still lose this map. But mm. as of right now, I think that they are showing a high level of mental fortitude. How good your uh, Ace of Pyrite impression? <laughs> We're about to find out here in about 2 minutes and 55 <laughs> seconds, aren't we? I'll leave that one for you, I think. I'll leave that one for you. <laughs> Speak of the goddamn devil. <laughs> and he will most definitely show his face, won't he? Brilliant. I tell you oh, what, that man. room with Ace in there casting with Lynx must be the <laughs> noisiest room in the whole building right now. Uh, most definitely. I've never heard anything like it. Uh, Ace, uh, absolute demon on the cast, and then we got the Yapper himself. King Yap. King the, uh, Yap. The volume in the green room does increase exponentially when Lynx walks through the door. <laughs> it's very quiet normally. He actually speaks at a normal volume, Lynx. Yes. 
is not. <laughs> no, no. Ace is one of those guys you get a microphone in front of them. Then you're you're going to yeah. hear that electricness, right? Then but you get it. Yeah. Lynx, if you think Lynx is different off cast, that's really funny. He's <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> not at all. Bless his heart and soul. Oh, now, a similar sort of setup coming in here from Fear X and what we saw from Dark Zero previously, if you recall. It's that hold on the mirror window looking in towards both sides. Well, but would be both sides. It's not the actual site they're defending, mm -hmm. but it's holding that whole west side of the map. And the beauty of it is you don't have to commit players to playing on that west side. It's a little bit safer for you to rotate back through Shrine or down past Drum. There's always the risk that you might have someone on Dark Zero ready to cut you off from the Shrine window or from the double window inside of Terrace itself. But for now, as you can see, they've all peeled their way back. They're happy they've wasted about half the round. And now Dark Zero can start thinking about, right, what does this execute look like? Because it is not looking like a VIP and display window execute. The key thing is right now is going to be down to the timing because there's a lot of utility that they're going to have to work through. And if they don't clear things out properly and have to just try and throw this to the wall and hope that it sticks, there's a lot of different ways that this could go awry. Even something as simple as a goo mine could thwart them in a proper gunfight and end up sending us into overtime. Pamba Zoo is going to get a nice drone play here inside a dry bar, be able to do a little discovery work for themselves as they continue to traverse this map. I'm ready for this as well. Canadian's got the exothermics, of course, but one of them's been left soft with a bit of the wall open out at the bottom so they can impact out of it. Here they're going to try and stick it in on towards the west side instead force their way through. Now, Arakazi has got to move. Is anyone there to get the cut? Absolutely not, but he holds close, gets into a gunfight, not going to win it out, and is forced to back away into the depths of sight. Good boy, though, crucially, is not the entry death this time around. He gets one, and Pamba's gone too. This is good for Fear X. We could be going there. Two versus five, 30 seconds remaining, but Bo's going to be able to get one. He's immediately decapitated, though. It's all down to NJR in a one versus four. And Dez, we're going to overtime. I like it. That's all I got. That's it. I haven't done a British accent in some time, so apologies for my British friends. Please don't set me on a pyre. I don't know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. You're slowly learning like it's, uh, some, some news to the world and they'll be so, be so depressed to hear this. You are a recently born Liverpool fan. I am. I you am You and indeed. Tim have got something in common and... <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the baldness, thank God. Yeah, I was, I was saying in the green room yesterday, it's so funny. Like, now you're really into, like, uh, English football, but you support it like an American sports yes. fan. And it is the weirdest crossover in the world. <laughs> yeah, there's just a couple of things that I was saying. I, I just saw it in your eyes. You're just like... Man, this is a weird dynamic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, our cultures uh, for sport are so different between the two countries. It's brilliant. So funny. So funny. But That's hey, I'll cool. definitely tell you this. I've really enjoyed uh, learning the strategies and that kind of stuff of soccer. It's a really enjoyable sport and something that obviously just with the way that the NA brain works for that sport, uh, you, you just don't really give it a good shake as a kid. Everybody's like, yeah. you're not playing American football. Why not? <laughs> yeah. What I find really interesting, we went to the Atlanta Major and went to go and watch basketball. I think I told you about it there. It was like an assault of the senses. Yes. There's just so much going on at all times. Like, chance, the but game is fast, like the entertainment during timeouts is mega. It was absolutely nuts. And obviously, American football is quite stop start as well. So it's always got something going on in some way, shape, or form. Mm. But soccer's quite flowing, is the yeah. way that I think about it, right? So it's going to be a, a change of pace, to say the least. And I'm really hoping that down the line, I'm able to go over to your neck of the woods and see a game, Derry. So yeah, I'll have, have to see what happens with that. But we'll go see Liverpool Villa game. It'll be hilarious. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Be anyway, so that's the, the soccer podcast done and dusted. We've got a round to cast. There it is. <laughs> Overtime here between Dark Zero and Fear X. Unfortunately, no, we still got a lot of this round remaining. It's going to be the drones out as of right now to try and clear out Good Boy here over on the office side. Yes, we spoke about this when Dark Zero on their defense, actually, that often Canadian would be the one roaming off by himself, normally on the Solus, and would eventually get pinched and punished by the side of Fear X. But now things have flipped. It's kind of time to see if Good Boy can slip the net, stay slippery enough while collecting drones, and hopefully a couple of scouts along the way to get himself back to site safely. And sure enough, has done just that. He's oh. up through Shrine, he's drawn out drones, a bit of utility, good stuff, and Canadian is the first to fall. Ouch. The wall is going to be put on ice as well on top of Canadian. I don't know if they're exactly going to be able to get that off the wall yet. I was looking at the lineup, but I was like, I don't really know how you guys <laughs> solve this. So I'm yeah. more than likely going to be breached open. And yes, indeed. What a cheeky angle there from NJR as well in the Rebel. It's pretty filth. I'm actually going to find someone from that as well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate not to, but for now at least, the Korean side stay in at the lead halfway into that round. Five versus four. Missing a grim. Not the end of the world, although you definitely appreciate having it when you're trying to force players that are sat static in pretty difficult positions to move away. I was kind of worried when I saw it was Good Boy out on the road, by the way. He'd already dropped down, obviously, all of his uh, EE1Ds that have been dropped around. Or the ED, sorry. Dropped them around the map already in the cap can. And then gone to sit out on the road. 
But if he'd been picked off again, Raid Boss is gone. He has been top fragging until the previous round where Rin has now jumped over him on 14 kills. Between them going for 27 is nuts. Absolutely. Been soaking up so much of this firepower for Fear X, allowing the others to kind of rest and make sure that they're just adhering to the strategy. Dark Zero, obviously with Canadian at the helm as of right now, flipping through these drones, trying to do his best to make the right call alongside Nafe. They have 50 seconds remaining to try and get something rolling here. Bo spotting a lot of utility through the floor, specifically this Nitro Cell that's awaiting Nafe's arrival right through the breach. They need to try and work themselves forward here, and that's where Bo's going to try and assist. Mephi, we going to keep them at the gates. He's looking for this frag right outside the window here, too. He'll oh. get it onto Nafe. A nice little trade, though, as Pambazoo will get one. NJR for one as well. These last two, I mean, it feels like if it's going to be a DZ round, right, it's got to be Pambazoo for two, but we'll just have to <laughs> see. He's looking for one, not able to get that one. It's going to be Bo on the other end, so might be a Bo triple instead. We'll just have to see. Bye. They know exactly where this guy is, and I feel so... So bad for him. <laughs> it's going to be Bo on a triple kill <laughs> with the 5-5-2. Five, five, I tell you what, Dark Zero are so good at stacking flashes onto target players, like whether it was Mephi on Blackstairs, whether it was Demic at the end there, just gets absolutely destroyed. Like you're spending more of the round with a white screen than actually seeing color. It's insane. So oppressive to deal with. The Warden of Mephi went down inside of Geisha. They had nothing to offer back towards the other side. And Dark Zero, that team play is looking on points they are ahead once again it's seven and six fear x moved to the attack if they win this one it's going to take all 15 to decide who wins on skyscraper i mean i just can't tell you how heated i would be <laughs> with all those candelas pouring in and then you also see the flashbang coming in you're like guys i'm already blind yeah, i promise on, you man. i can't <laughs> see <laughs> glasses no gla i don't have eyeballs right now they're gone <laughs> it's nothingness dark uh. zero Throwing everything at Fear X in that round, and I mean, man, very, very fortunate circumstances befalling them, obviously. But now the shoe's on the other foot. Fear X looking pretty solid on their offensive assaults here, but they haven't done it in a while, does so. That's something to yes. consider. And I think Dark Zero really figured things out towards the end of that first half. They won the last two rounds, and the major change was rather than sending Canadian up on the solos to roam solo, they had him instead playing with Pamba. Pamba was normally on the Legion. Here he's on the Fenrir, so they have made a couple of other changes in terms of what's being played, because let's not forget, Canadian's massive 3-4K in that round on the uh, on the Mute came off the back of that Goomon, letting him know that Rin had walked into the room, in which he could just spin and get the kill. So... A little bit more kind of different in terms of setup. It will keep Fear X asking questions. It's not going to be the same as how things went before. And their lineup, to me at least, looks pretty standard. No shields, which is where they found most of their success in that first half. Canadian. Hammers around for him. He'll be able to spot Buck here, working things from Master's side. Going to do his best to try and strip up this flooring like we talked about earlier when Dark Zero was in a very similar circumstance on this site. We do have Canadian all the way over in Narnia in comparison to where the bomb site is, though. So just trying to make sure Fear X, if they do try and go for that full clear, does they have to deal with a few bodies? Do, but now it's been a, a slower start more than anything else. Like we've seen normally, again the roamers being a little aggressive, trying to chew through drones, trying to pick people apart. But even on the drone count, we've only seen two oh. drones die. Canadian, bless his heart and soul, he, he keeps getting in a lot of these early fights and is being picked off as a result. A good one to find him, Mephi. Stepping up to the plate there and removing him. All five alive still for Fear X. But we were here last round and Dark Zero still went on to win. Oh, those drone mechanics were pretty impressive from Arakaze. Not going to lie. Zip. Not every day you get to get excited about a drone play, right? <laughs> you take what you can get. Exactly. <laughs> NJR. I can find the house stairs for right now. Good boy's going to make sure that this single panel can be <laughs> utilized. Oh, that was a scary moment there Says. for both parties, respectively. And JR, very little damage dealt to him from that skeleton key, but good boy in turn taking quite a bit from that M590. Well, we all know the SCS shotgun's the one, skeleton key, inferior. <laughs> Most definitely. Not quite able to do enough damage. No, I did wonder for a second. I was like, well, they just kind of catch each other here, like at this kind of range, but. I with them falling down. At this point, starting to square up for the push through. Again, more stuff being taken away. We saw when it was evil eyes previously, those nades used to remove that here. It's more for the barbed wire. But the two C4s in the back pocket of Nathan Bolo are what I'm looking at here. It might not be vertical denial, but it might be plant denial later in two rounds. It's definitely. This verticality is going to start 
We're in a few of Dark Zero's positions, especially with these stuns pouring in, if they can get it in good timing. You can see that Fear X really want to try and work their way in for the most part from Terrace and Office. With that stairwell really being the big issue here, that Nitro Cell is going to get a big play for Bo. But does he know that he still has people over inside of Terrace? Seemingly so. So he'll try and rotate back in. Bo not good for the shot, though. Zarokaze will take him down. It's a two versus two. This is completely doable for Fear X. We could have every single round here in between these Need two the teams. Arakaze on the cover. A move here and Pamba goes down. And JR once again very low HP. Similar circumstances oh, to what we'd seen before. It's Rin on a triple. But <gasps> NJR on a heater. Look at that angle that he has. Oh! And JR shuts it down in overtime. DZ takes Skyscraper from Fear X. That was absolutely crazy again. Fear X put themselves in a number advantage one situation HP. and give it away. And yes, on the left screen, the man had one HP to his name. What on earth is that? Not exactly high celebrations from Dark Zero, but you understand why. That shouldn't have been that close. They've been taken to the limit by, it sounds bad to say, but by arguably the worst team at the competition. They were the lowest seed coming in. They haven't had good performances. And DZ, who's somewhat touted to have a big, deep run here, have really been pushed to the limit. Absolutely. Ren and Good Boy were definitely the standout players oh, here for Fear X. And honestly, considering that, if you have some, you know, those bigger highlight moments for some of those other players, this could be a completely different scenario here. Dark Zero could be down 0-1 on that map. Yes, it was that close. That's why DZ immediately stood up and were like, all right, we got to start talking about this because this could get pretty risky when we start moving over to Chalet. These guys keep this confidence and keep this play style. It's, it's already proven to be a far better series than what I expected. That was a really good map back and forth on the evolution of both teams. You know, the change in DZ in the first half after their timeout. Shield base playing the first few rounds from DRX. Just really exciting all the way from start to finish. And I hope Shelly proves to be the same. But given it's DZ's map pick, I think I still hold to that expectation. This is going to be a 2-0. You like France? Yes. Well, good news. We're heading to France right after this break with Chalet, folks. We'll see you in a bit. Terrible. Putting up the wall directly to the right of her. But again, just like Addict him, does he know? No, he doesn't. Nobody's found the intel. A brutal misplay from D plus Kia and another advantage for Space Station. D plus Kia's drone in just hasn't been good enough. Um, is the top and bottom of it. You've, six two. you've got six drones left. It's too late now, Quartered. It, <laughs> that's the honest answer. You know, it's so reactive. <laughs> We've lost somebody in there, so now we're going to drone it. Right, is it too late? Guys, I don't know if you know this. Uh, there's an Azami inside. Of dormers. We should probably deal with her, right? And Coded's solution is to prone peak the rotate. I mean, it ends up working out, but what have we said? A minute, over a minute, over a minute and a half wasted for D plus Kia on these extensions and these roams from SSG. And sure, they have a 3v3 now, but they're just opening the hatch. They barely even have cafeteria control, and there are still players lurking, like Fultz on Freezer Stairs, who could undo the execute if. Shockingly, D plus Kia's droning game doesn't suddenly improve in the next 45 seconds. I'm not going to hold my breath that it will do. Uh, we, <laughs> I guess we'll see. Uh, they're going to be heading, still looking to clear top floor. Let's not forget, this is a meeting site. Yes, oh, he's not they're trying to get the verticals. Yes, they're trying to ensure that they can get in there safely. But ultimately, D plus not even really pushing themselves into a position to be able to put the diffuser down now. They're going to be heading in towards kitchen. That's where they're looking for that final execute. Quartered has it in hand. They've got the man above. There is the potential here, but Forrest is just going to play the smoke game from D. This 10 seconds left to go. Woogie man, he knows somebody might be on freezer, whether it's droned or not. He's gonna check that Goo reveals his position. The first gunfight doesn't work. Foltz gets the initial kill, and the trade's going D plus Kia's way. 1v2, but Hot and Cold's got the drop. Coded planting the diffuser. Do they have the intel? He's going too far to the left. He can't quite get the angle on the ace. Just barely sees him at the last second. 0.5 seconds remaining in that diffuser, maybe even less. And that's what separated the 4-2 for D plus Kia. And now a 5-1 half instead for SSG. Yeah, it's tough, uh, it's tough for D plus Kia because you look at it now, and I always say this about a 5-1 half. SSG move on to the attack, and they just need to find one site. They're not going to be happy with the 7-5, which is what it would end up if they can only win on one site. But ultimately, they just need to find one site that they can get those wins on, and they will 
at some point double it up and get those two wins that they need. And I just can't see D plus Kia holding on at the minute. SSG, uh, you know, it's not just been about attack versus defense. It's not just been about intel and droning. SSG are just a step ahead of the game at the minute. They're just playing more as a team, more cohesive, um, working with each other, baiting opportunities out for each other. Hot and cold, great patience at the end there to ultimately find that diffuser, get it shut down. Um, great one there. I think we've just got a slight technical delay um, where we're just going to have to get the players back out and into the lobby, but it shan't be long and we'll be back going. Does mean uh, officially, though, with that half, uh, the trend stays true. Only one attacking round for D plus Kia in all of their maps. Very, very rough stat line, but with their defenses being better and Woogie Man still maintaining a very solid performance on that attacking side, I believe somewhere between eight to nine kills by the end of that half. Really the only one from D plus Kia, though, who has, of course, been showing up on the scoreboard, but making the big plays they needed to get them closer to those end round moments. The front and back line, aside from him, it's just not been there. You could at least sometimes say, all right, you know, maybe the droning is okay or the supporting game is there, but it's those entries that aren't picking up the numbers. I mean, SSG four and two on the opening picks, maybe, maybe the front line is the only problem. But with those moments with Foltz not getting droned, nobody be able to clear Attic, nobody clearing Jane, I know inside of dorms costing even more time and a body by the end of the clear. Really everything aside from Woogie Man so far this series, it's either been mediocre at best, hit or miss, or just outright not good at worst. Well, we'll see whether we have any improvement in the second half. It's going to be an interesting contrast now to see SSG on the attack. I'm expecting to see a uh, much better drone economy, much better um, efficient use of that Intel utility and showing just how important it is. I'd be very surprised to see SSG, for example, getting caught out twice on the flank from somebody on the top floor. Um, I just don't think we'll be seeing that sort of thing happen. So um, as we get back into things, of course, um, D plus Kia, it's just that opportunity for them to have a reset. The, I mean, the technical timeout might not actually have come at the worst time, really, just to let them take the foot off the gas a little bit and just slow things down. Definitely not a bad time just to center yourself. Obviously, players can't talk during a I translated pause, so. that for you, by the way. What? The foot off the gas. I translated it for you <laughs> so you'd understand. What's the what's the British version? I don't know. We'd we'll probably say accelerator. Accelerator? Yeah, we have an accelerator pedal. You have a gas pedal. Well, one is significantly shorter to say. <laughs> so in terms of like communicating it, my way is a lot better. I mean, it worked well. It did its job, I guess. It did. I and you know what's funny? This doesn't have the same finesse. You you say I suppose it's not. You know, it's too erudite for us Americans. <laughs> accelerator, polysyllabic, gas, mono. But also, I didn't even realize that you were translating it. You said foot off the gas, and you're like, I translated it for you. And I was like, I have no idea what you could be referring to. Literally not a not a hint of a clue at what you I could I see that you are drinking some tea, though, Carter. I am. I see I, that you've, you know, you decided you were getting involved with the Brits today. Let me take, so let me take the tea back out, because now they're starting to get low. You've been drinking the entire brew, I as have. we would call a cup of tea, with the tea bag in. Is that okay? Is that not allowed? It's generally frowned upon. Is it? Yeah, you'd normally take the tea bag out. You know what else is frowned upon? <laughs> not, I believe, uh, I believe not participating in the afternoon tea. I told you that. If, in confidence. if there were, if there were, I told you that in confidence. Well, I, I, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying I feel I like. I don't like tea, Carl. Just like, get off my back. I'm not, I, I'm not on anybody's back, Tim. I'm just saying if you had a theoretical British, uh, I don't know, we'll say somewhere between 30 to 40 year old gentleman, <laughs> and this, this is sounding awfully convenient. <laughs> and if this. If this man... What, what sort of head of hair does he have? Um, you know, uh, there have been better days. Okay. There have been better days. And if this man <laughs> did not... The has seen better yes, times. Yes, it, it has. Listen, it's, it's, you know, it's not 2005 anymore. It's, uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> if this man did not enjoy the traditional afternoon tea that his countrymen might, I don't know, frowned on such a dereliction of his duty. See, afternoon... You see, you say, you're referring there specifically to afternoon tea. You know, I'm, I might be educating you a little bit here. In Britain, that's a different thing. Oh. Um, so it's not just a cup of tea that you would drink in the afternoon. An afternoon tea is like a specific thing. So you would sit down with it. It's like a sit-down thing. Yes, you may have tea, but you'd have, like, little sandwiches, little cakes, things like that, little sort of finger oh. nibbles. Um, so afternoon tea is like an actual set, like, event, really. It's like you'd sit down with friends and you'd have, like, a little... Yeah, so Very it's not just a cup of tea that you would have in the afternoon. Well, Tim, that's a very astute observation. I, I dislike tea of any variety. Well, I was about to say, it's a very astute observation who, for one who finds a, a cornerstone of British culture so repugnant. Yeah. Just not a fan of the old tea. <laughs> But we are, we are back into it. Shall we talk about some siege? <laughs> uh, 
I suppose he might not be for much longer, depending on what happens on this attacking half. But <laughs> he could be right. But, but actually, to your point about SG's attacking half, again, all they need is two bomb sites. That'd be a 7 5. But that could potentially happen. Again, SSG's Oregon game against Bliss yesterday, both were incredibly slow. I used the word lethargic to describe them, and not only is it, one, just a very good word, but two, very apt to describe SSG's performance yeah. because, again, they could fall on, they had their fallbacks. They would bring a Blitz to try to either rush elbow or rush down freezer stairs, and now they have the Ying and the Grim as well to try to make this a lot easier. But the SSG drone economy, it was very hit or miss. Some rounds getting great value, some rounds not at all, especially with that Solus on the board. Of course, not used right now, but still, the potential is there for D plus Q to start picking up rounds. Quoted, um, interestingly, at the minute, is just reinforcing Atuk, um, but he's in big tower at the minute. He's just sort of playing in and around this rotate, um, and I'm not sure if that's something that SSG are aware of. Going to take a sneaky little move up to T3 here, and it's already likely been drawn and checked. Uh, when also, SSG, if they've done their prep, he he's done it. He's done this yeah. already. He, this is a position that, you know, coded or wardens in general will play, because what do you think of in big tower? Flash is being chucked in the windows and just trying to hide yourself. Hot and cold is over that side, but the rest of SSG is stacking up over here. And this might not be a bad call because you're just <laughs> taking Coated out of the equation. Forrest goes in, completely full flash, but doesn't matter. Slings the shield on his back, and he's going to start getting that diffuser down. Almost certainly going to stick it. There's nobody in a position to prevent or deny it. And there it goes. Activated. Woogie Man too late with the Nitro. Does manage to find full though. J90, hot and cold, one apiece. Four versus two as Ashen takes down Damali. And all of a sudden, D plus Kia, they are on the back foot. They are trying to fight their way back into sight. They have become the attackers, trying to retake that ground soldier. He hears the repel. He knows that there's one there. Manages to take down J9 or two versus three, but only about 12 seconds. He runs headlong into the barrel of Ashen, and this is SSG absolutely snatching and <laughs> grabbing this round away from D+. Plus. The time is gone. Woogie Man, it doesn't matter what you do. The round is over, and SSG, they head to map point. Point. Love that call from SSG because what were we talking about? One benefit of this potential tech pause. D plus Kia, you just went down 5 1. Take some time to center yourself. Calm down the emotions. Take a breath. How do you think they feel okay. after that, right? And I was about to say, <laughs> SSG were like, all right, let's turn it back up to 11. Let's yep. just immediately launch back into it. And the practical and strategic benefit of that call as well, if, you, if it works out, you've just gone up to match for, or map point 6 1 scoreline. Forever the Bride, or Forever the... What's the third I'm looking forward here? I've already messed up the intro. <laughs> Bridesmaid. There it is. Never the Bride. Correct. That's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> Never the Bride? Never the Bride. <laughs> Never the Bride. Never the Bride, always the Bridesmaid might be a better one. That's the best way to describe Fear X anyway. So close, at least here. We've seen improvements as the tournament has gone by. They brought us up to overtime. They were up 3-1 at one point. They were given Dark Zero the runaround on one of the most defender-sided maps in the game. But ultimately, the North American side persevered off the back of some excellent rounds from individual players, but also as a team, just ensuring VRX's stream and nothing but full white flash the entire time, it felt like. An 8-6 win in the end on the map pick of VRX. Now we're going into Chalet, which is Dark Zero's map pick, and I think the series will play out the way that we expect. And all history will remember is a 2-0 for Dark Zero. Absolutely. You know, a lot of interesting prospects there in Skyscraper, but it all ended up being for not, sadly, from Fear X. They had a very hard-fought map, and yes, that is their selection, but now we go to a completely different script. Chalet, which has been a pretty interesting map thus far here That was SI. horrific. Yeah. The spray pull down while he's on 1 HP as well is just the worst. Oh, my. I, I genuinely could not believe that NJR won that situation at all. Not only that he had 5 HP at the start, but he somehow took another round and didn't die. Just mind-boggling. You know what the scariest thing for me is? That's probably the first game that we've seen uh, PRX go positive on entry. As mentioned coming into it, they were minus 16 on entry across the whole competition, but looked quite convincing. And you can see really the difference between the two teams comes down to the three lower players on the side of PRX. Mephi, Arakaze, and Demic. Yes, they had a couple of high moments throughout the game, but ultimately, 
just not at the standard required. And I think at a tournament like this, like you can see from Dark Zero, you really need the vast majority, if not all of your team, firing on all cylinders. Consistency is key, and it's always it been a thing in Siege. You can see those massive gaps in teams when it's a one or two man show in comparison to a team that is, as you said, firing on all cylinders. You have every single player in the server uh, putting their hand in the pot and getting something out for your squad. And as for Dark Zero, at least during Skyscraper, they were able to muster that in a pretty convincing way. You know, the first portion of their uh, defensive rounds are not exactly looking great but i will have a big shout out here to mint on that timeout slowing things down allowing them to try and reassess the situation what was going on if you remember right after that timeout was when canadian popped off with i think a quad kill in the very next round you guys have made things even worse and given dark zero two more or actually no i take it back three yeah, percent yeah, 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 yeah. so Firex have converted some fans. 3% of them, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's still 92% to Dark Zero. No surprise. Again, coming into this series, everyone had Dark Zero down on their predictions. I expect to walk away with a 2-0. Hmm. Firex have put up a pretty valiant effort so far, but they're going to have to work even harder here. Coming into Chalet, not their map pick, and starting here on the defense. That's the only real bit of reprieve they've got, the little bit of comfort they can take. But I think Dark Zero are still going to make it very difficult for them regardless. Most definitely. No bad band coming out here as well. That dictates that Fear X more than likely wants to try and uh, be aggressive towards Dark Zero. Maybe mm. a run out from Trench Door, maybe a couple of hop outs from Library, something along those lines. And honestly, we don't really see Nomad in every single lineup. She's brought every once in a while yeah. on Chalet when that's something that you can consider. But, you know... For a lot of these doors, I mean, it's just a simple claymore or something like that, and you're pretty much good to go. Virax is going to ban mm. out Solas here. I really like this idea just with how much Canadian loves this operator. Absolutely agree. And coming back to the Nomad point, like, Gridlock we saw a little bit on the last map as well. Not the perfect alternative to a Nomad, but mm -hmm. as an operator these days, like, Gridlock does so much. Let's not forget, although they've been nerfed, she's got two nades, the ability to get rid of gadgets, has the super shorty, mm -hmm. a decent gun, the track, she's got four of them, like does so much on one operator that actually, despite being a one speed, is still quite handy to entry players who need to get a lot done with the team. So I do think you'll probably see her get brought out once or twice on this map. Let's more so towards things like Cafe, you'll see her picked up, but again, you've seen her a moment ago on Skyscraper. No reason why the teams might not gravitate towards her here as well. We'll see if Mephi picks that up a little bit later on. But now though, we get underway in Kitchen and Dining as said VRX start on the defensive side. Dark Zero, what have you been cooking with this new lineup? Because Shelley has been a, a, a map they've enjoyed for a long time. I think about when they used to play it back in North America. I can think about the number of times that I saw Troy playing out on Office Balcony with the Capital and just cooking whoever was sat on the mezzanine uh, shield alive. Yeah. They just could do nothing. And NGR especially, I think, was... A little bit of a definer for being able to open up the rotate hole inside of library box that then moves you through into library itself and you used to dance in and out of library box and library itself. Mm. So very, very proficient at this map. Definitely got some hallmarks to it that define or are defined by Dark Zero. And I think once we get them onto uh, or at least into the round, you'll see some of that start to shine. And that is where I think VRX are going to struggle. Absolutely. And I was just about to touch on this as well. Bo here with the Lion. And overall, this lineup from Dark Zero looks unbelievably annoying. Especially with their explosive nature with Pambazoo here that oh, can man. potentially fly up the hatch. Imagine. I mean, this is going to run amok of Fear X, and they're really going to have to keep their head on a swivel. Off the back of an E1D coming in, Grim coming out, the Yings following through as well. Pamba could wreak absolute havoc inside the back line, especially in the sights of Fear X. If they aren't prepared for this, or aren't at least aware that it's a thing that's in their wheelhouse, this is going to stink. It's the only way that it can be summarized. Most definitely. They're doing their due diligence as well, getting these drones fired up on the top floor, making sure they're implemented to and slow down Fear X, or at least gather some information on their next move. Obviously, that also dictates that somebody is going to need to be on those drones. So if somebody passes away a little bit later on, they'll more than likely immediately hop to. Ren's going to be able to at least get rid of one, but now they're more than aware that Ren is playing inside of Master. There we go. A couple of the launchers firing on through into half wall and into bedroom, just sniffing out what's going on, trying to push back some of those defensive players on Fear X that are holding maybe a little bit tighter to the line than they would like. It gives the room for Pampa to get in. Now that they're sure no one's going to be pushing their way through, as full flashed himself, admittedly. It looks like this flash heavy play is definitely not going to stop coming into Chalet either. It was their thing massively on the last map, and it's carried on here. It's why I'm partly surprised not to see 
the Ying found the way by Fearex, to be honest. Oh, Pambazoo with a nice kill onto Demic. That was that top floor engagement that they were looking for. Good Boy's going to get tagged up as well. I believe that was from one of the windows over here. I have a hop in for the library hallway soon, but they don't want to try and get too overly aggressive. Otherwise, he more than likely will get punished. That stun, Good Boy's going to step directly into, and he's more than likely not even going to see his own demise. It's nope. actually, he will get Pambazoo. <laughs> but Bolo's there in transition to be able to take him down. They are honestly getting bullied by these flashes, though. And again, I'm really surprised they don't have more answers to it. I know they've got the Wamai. I know they've got the Ward, and there's not too much more you can do. But ban against the Ying, for me, would have been the play coming into this game. Arakazi oh. with it all to do. Nothing to be said. A very easy first round for Dark Zero. A global operator working wonders with that EE1D. Lion constantly and consistently able to lock down Fear X and make it to where they really can't move. They're a stick in the mud. Well, Dark Zero are in full transition. They're being to the top floor or onto the site. It was very well met by Dark Zero and Fear X not able to hold a candle to their light. Oh boy. All right, so already we're seeing that there's uh, difficulties for Fear X. Admittedly, when Dark Zero are coming to this with the game plan they've got, Everything being structured and planned out. Canadian getting the launchers in, opening up for Pamba Bazoo to charge forward, having the Ying Candelas flying in off the side at the back of that. That's really good coherent team play. And we saw this at points back on the last map. Maybe not as consistent as what I imagine we'll see it here. But if the trend continues like this, I am worried that Virex will just get absolutely slammed here and it'll be a very quick map. It's really scary as well, Des, because you could see the conversation happening for Dark Zero in the first opening minute and a half right there because they actually had Pambazoo push all the way down into Wine to go, to, uh, go for that hatch. Um, whether it be, you know, Canadian or Nave, we obviously can't, don't know that because we we're not in their comms, right? But one of them was like, hey, let's just pull this back. We're going to actually have you address Solarium instead and we're going to take this from the top floor, rip all of this out because they're more than likely going to be able to stop the plan if we go for it this way. And it was masterfully done. They had to try and deal with that top floor pl uh, presence from Fear X and they did it swimmingly. Really a little bit cheeky. Probably not. No. Sat waiting, hoping someone's going to come from spawn this side, but... Hollow on the 9mm. <laughs> I just think it's not going to happen. No, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a hater on that. You got the 1.5. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's really. not the one to be running. Well, they're saying that some players do prefer just having the consistency across all guns and just like to run hollow only on everything. I, I, whenever uh, whenever we bring that up, I always think of Shiko because Shiko is always running the hollow site. Within like recent history, he's added the 1.5 to a handful of guns, but there for a very long time, it did not matter what site was available. He was running the holographic. What you might see the uh, thing we spoke about earlier come through where you shoot the Zotop off and it immediately activates. However, NGR is trying to go in and the wall has been electrified. There will be a little bit of a giveaway though as now the EMP can come on through and the wall shall be opened up. Round can resume as normal even with the tube around the Kaid stack. Very well done. You could see that Firex were doing their damnedest to try and make it to where the Electro Claw wouldn't land in the ice. That's going to allow that to actually start itself up, but it's not going to work out the exact way that they wanted it to. Rin? Crazy transition here. Went all the way over in the trophy. <laughs> yeah. Did not expect Rin to have already been all the way over in practically Asgard. Mm. Is, uh, I suspect they know as well, by the way, because mm -hmm. you saw, I forget who it was that was outside the window, but they were sat watching it, expecting a jump out of some kind. In fact, it was Bolo. So I think they know that Rin is somewhere around the map, but don't ultimately want to invest too much time chasing him around. We've already gone through half the round, for example. They've rotated a bunch of players oh. up towards this top side. Good boy, the reverse, reverse, the delete Bolo. Not far from the end of the world. We've already seen a number of times that Dark Zero have gone on to win a four versus five, but the last thing you probably want is good boy Franny his brains out once again. Arakaze to fall to Naif into a 4v4. He's got the big garage position, but there's so many angles working their way in here from Fear X. This is going to be a big deciding moment, but oh, like two ships in the night, Derry. <laughs> Pass by. Yep. Nobody knowing where the other one is. Pamba, some soul searching, and he'll find Rin. No camera needed, just a solid shot. A little swing there to be able to discover that player on the top balcony. Effie working their way up now as well. Might be able to find one here in the kitchen hall, but oh, nice little shoulder peek there from Dark Zero. Be able to keep them alive, at least for now. And now Fear X only have one man on site. Good boy, it's a one-man show for them. Effie does have the opportunity to try and hit this flank, but remember, they do know that he's around the space. And GR taken low and finished off as well. Problem is, good boy's probably the last guy that you want sat inside of sight. I say that, naturally cast a curse as he hits the deck. It's all down to Mephi. They knew that he was trapped up inside bar gaming, so they could execute onto the site. That's what they've got undone. Full takeover of wine. It's going to go down here. It's three players left. This is a big ask for Mephi to save. Oh, Nave. 
very quickly nips that in the bud. Mephi not really able to do too much given the scenario, and honestly, it will require a lot of heavy lifting in general. So, Fear X now go down two rounds here on the defensive end. Dark Zero looking indomitable on these offenses. I mean, Fear X, yeah, they get to pick the pick on the bow, but Dark Zero already readdressing things across the board and able to make some very serious power moves. I was just going to do a check, actually, because we spoke about it coming into it, but really the big matchup that's going to come tomorrow is GK coming up against Fear X for who goes home and who gets to stay, admittedly in a very precarious situation, but who gets to stay here in the competition. And I think the way it pans out is GK currently have two points. They've won two separate maps. Haven't won any series, but won two maps. Therefore, they have themselves two points. You get four points for 2-0. You get three points if you win 2-1 and the other side gets one point. And then the reverse, obviously, based on if you only take one map or no maps. And interesting, that means I think if Virex was to go on and win that series 2-1, and one, they'd get three points. You'd see GK getting one point. They'd both be on the same number of points. And there'd be a tiebreak situation coming in. Mm. So... Although that first map has really done a favor for Fearex by coming close, if this turns into an absolute absolute slaughter, that might actually massively play into GK's favor. So every round, although it might not feel too important, it could be the difference between staying and going home if Fearex were to win 2-1 tomorrow. You got to worry about that plus minus. That's a big thing right there. Because the thing is, based on how they played last map, I could actually see Fearex winning. Do I think it will be a 2-0? No but I could see them beating GK. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely can agree with you on that one. These two teams seem like uh, they're both pretty feisty in their own way, and it'd be a nice little matchup to see. So see if we actually end up getting that down the line. As of right now, it's looking like it will be the case, but either way, Dark Zero trying to address things on this top floor with the drone game. A few bodies up here, obviously, as they need to hold on to library for this setup. I do. It's kind of the, the area to defend, the box to hold on to. With most sites, if you can't play them laterally or if not holding upstairs would be far too risky for you, then to uh, then head upstairs in some wild cases, even downstairs. I think about when defending bar stage on club, for example, we saw G2 playing around that from the basement with Doki tossing C4s up through the hatch. It was a little bit wild, but more often than not, you do find yourself playing it from above, and that is why you can see library being held here. Or at least it was, <laughs> until they've been forced out. <laughs> yeah, they got some active players over on the office side of things that could try and thwart Dark Zero's game plan later on down the line if they can get a clean rotation. But knowing DZ, there's not only going to be utility or a drone or a body there, but somebody probably willing to try and ice you as well. MP out. You have to put that on the ground. I confused just for a split second. A lot of people using those e impact EMPs nowadays. They're like, wait, hold on. This one, this one's not an impact. This is Thatcher. Yes. So, if able to get that out, and they'll be able to open up the back of bar stock, one of the most important portions of that bomb site. This radius is quite significant. I mean, it just goes to show that even with the mini EMPs being in the game now, the impact EMPs, that actually Thatcher's still got quite a decent pick rate and is still quite... You know, crucial to many in attack, given the radius is, hu radius is huge. The time nice. that Gags are delayed for stays up longer as well. Yes, very nice. I mean, DZ, once again, commanding position, 5v3. He's out here. I'm Canadian. He's the one with the Feeling case it. here. A couple of angles here for Pambazoo as well. And I love that they're just patiently waiting to see what Fear X's response is going to be. Rin takes the... Oh, no. my. There's how? no way. I have no idea how Rin how? Even knew that he was there. It's a triple kill for Rin. It's down to Nave. Nitro out. It's going to deal some damage. Nafe does have a chance here if he can find this angle. Oh, man. There should be one creeping in from behind him right now as well. I'm getting so nervous, Derry. Oh, Arakaze. Wow. The perfect timing and transition there. Swings out with the TCS G12 and lops the head off of the last Dark Zero member. They're really going to want that one back. I am not sure where... I don't know if he came up, like, lobby stairs? Uh, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Like, is that he where went... else could he have come from? He would have been seen pretty much anywhere else, right? But there was a player dancing up and down library stairs, and I'm not sure if that meant they took their eye off jungle, and then you've just had... Uh, Rin just run through, down across Mez, and then into library from there. I'm not 100% sure, but... Maybe at some point I'll have to go back and find out about that. But that was the backstab that... Dark Zero were not expecting. We weren't expecting it. It caught us completely off guard. Just danced his way through and has absolutely destroyed Dark Zero from what was a very commanding position. 
And that's a round snatched away, I think, from the American side. They, they were looking at this game and thinking, we should be at 3-0 right now. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's no way that any of them predicted that Rin was going to do something so magical on that top floor. But sometimes you need a little luck on your side and things. Obviously, a lot of mechanical ability leading into that for Rin. But the positioning there, an oversight from Dark Zero that usually doesn't happen. Good lord. Five seconds remaining. Normally one of the more composed teams that we see at tournaments like this as well. With the info game, but I guess really this is now you're seeing why Bitfear X has got the balance of the Nomad. Haven't quite got the same security as before. You need someone to be watching those drones. Maybe the past reliance or the kind of air quotes muscle memory of having those air jabs down to provide enough cover is now fighting them or at least putting them on the backside. However, I do feel like Dark Zero aren't the kind of team to let that happen again. Most definitely. E1D here for Bo. So rocking that 417. Oh, keep harping on that thing as long as that thing is a solid weapon. Because anything you can two-shot somebody with in this game is uh, all right by me. Oh, he's going to be picking that thing over any other weapon I can get my hands on. I can tell you that. We haven't seen the F2 a bit on Twitch once again, which is a oh, nice have. change of pace. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's well, nice. Well, it's because some of them run in the DMR as well. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. in that mix. Yeah, it's really, really nice, honestly. Whenever both guns are usable, that's really what you want at the end of the day, right? So maybe one day, Papa Ubisoft will bless us with uh, grips again on the F2, and then <laughs> everybody will just convert back over to the church. <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem. Remember that running around and terrorizing ranked games everywhere? Oh, man. Mm. I saw uh, Apollo and uh, Ness yesterday on Ash and Twitch, and I was like, this lineup in 2019 <laughs> is crazy. This throwback. Rin's got the right idea. Just, uh, again, like ships in the night passing each other by a matter of pixels, and you imagine there'll be a gun battle ensuing at some point, but it looks like Nafe has already dropped away to go and join Canadian up on Solar Side. So now at least a little bit of a, a pause in the action. Now it's back underway once again. Good boy with a run out. Getting aggressive again, abusing the fact that there is no Nomad available on this map. Well, if they were able to get a little bit of info on that, they'll definitely know that there's two bodies downstairs from Fear X. Great patience here from Dark Zero, utilizing as many windows as they can get their hands on. Pambazoo able to make it happen from the bathroom balcony, but good boy will be able to take down Bolo here to at least equalize things for now. There's a minute remaining here in between these two. Obviously, Dark Zero are the ones that are in control of this gas pedal for the off offensive perspective, but it doesn't mean that Fear X can't go for some big sweeping rotations. We already see one building its way up on the library side of things. Demic, oh my, Canadian with a find through the wall onto said player. And that's going to force Good Boy to peel back. Yeah, he was really relying on some kind of crossfire or distraction to force a fight there. He's been holding inside a jungle for the longest time, but Demic falling by the wayside means they've only got two left and they cannot leave Arakaze alone in a one versus three. With it all to do, Pamba's got the right sort of idea. Hold for the cover. Arakazi goes down. Good boy's on for a triple. But it would need to be an ace. And Dark Zero are not going to open that window. They slam the door shut. And they take themselves a 3-1 lead. A very clean round there from Dark Zero. Being able to keep their head in the game and not allowing themselves to play into Fear X's hand. I especially like that even though those picks earlier on going the way of Fear X uh, uh, you know, weren't immediately addressed, they were able to utilize those drones, utilize their utility, and start to try and take control over these key pivotal portions of the map that they were looking for to try and get this case down. They got control of Master, transitioned that into a Kitchen Plant, and what... Well, from that moment on, not really too much to say there for Fear X. I mean, yeah, we do have a moment for Good Boy there with a nice little impact from West Main. But even that, at the end of the day, was not something that was out of the realm of possibility for Dark Zero to deal with. It's going to be attack time out here from Fear X as Dark Zero are already up three rounds on the offensive side. Fear X, obviously, with just one on their defense. Proved to be an absolute mirror of Skyscraper as well. We got to this point on the last map where it was 3-1 to Fear X. Dark Zero called in attack timeout. Went on to win the next two rounds. That's the big question mark now is will VRX be able to get a couple of defensive rounds on the board? Like we said, I'm pretty sure every map, I'd have to go back and double check the stats, but pretty much every map is defender leaning at this competition. So you would expect seeing 4-2 halves, even 5-1 halves, a 3-3. Already feels like it'll be disappointing for Fear X when they've got to go onto the attacking side on a map that isn't their map pit next. So let's hope for them they get something out of this. If they can go the way towards Dark Zero again here in round five, 
It'll end up being a 5-1 half. We all know that starts to spell disaster for the Korean side and their hopes of having any kind of advantage going in against GK tomorrow. Well, if the map pool was a dartboard, Derry, Chalet would be the bullseye as it's practically dead center in between all of the maps. It's at 57% defensive overall win rate. And I know you're going to be shocked. The most winning site, Bar Gaming at 65. Hmm. Five seconds left. What map, which map is the most attacker leaning at the moment? I'll figure that out for you. We went through Defender, we said it was Skyscraper and Clubhouse. Clubhouse being the first, Skyscraper the second. But Activate. it's Consulate at 52. Mm, there you go. And the Defender leaning. And Everything, the... every map over 57%, uh, over 50%, sorry, is crazy. Yeah, and... Think back to the old days when like Border and like Coach used to be like 38% or something crazy. The Defenders? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, the the uh, times that we've went through with each the different metas and just the different ways that these maps have played out through history is truly incredible to witness and be a part of. Uh, but actually, crazy thing about that console thing while we're on the uh, subject, the CEO meeting uh, site has the most plays as well. 33% defensive uh. win rate. <laughs> you guys, you guys got to stop. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like bar cocktail on cafe. It's exactly the same without having a terrible win rate. Yeah, people keep on playing it on the defense. It's balmy. However, when we step again, very execute heavy and very pacey comp here coming out from Dark oh. Zero. Looking at the blitz, looking at the ying, looking at the movement already coming in as we charge on fours. Demic getting himself on the board finally. However, his three quick kills coming the way of Dark Zero into yet another one. And Demic, you found one, my friend. You got to find the rest. It's just not going to happen. Dark Zero. They keep up that pace, and I did say if it goes to 4-1, and one, I expect a 5-1 half. That timeout, at least in that round, did nothing for Firax. Yeah, that was the first time that we saw Dark Zero use that operator lineup with a downshift. Just threw that thing right into high RPM and flew into sight. Yep. Amazing stuff. And that's, that's really what I like out of Dark Zero, is that they will take an operator lineup like that and play it out very passively to kind of allow the defense to get used to things. Oh yeah, we have this, we have that. That doesn't mean we're exactly going to try and go for an aggressive look. And then the very next time around, they're like, all right, here's the ace in the hole. <laughs> like, we are flying into sight. They're going to eliminate every single target they can in a uh, pretty low amount of time. So very well done there from Dark Zero as they practically batter and bruise Fear X immediately after their timeout. Dude, I can't imagine they're going to let up here in round six. Keep it going. Get to 5-1. Oh, yeah. Give Look yourself, at that. <laughs> just give yourself a momentous advantage going into that second half. Again, as their map pick, you would expect them to see them run away with it. But I'll come back to the line I've said. All tournament long. For two halves to a game of Siege. You just don't know what to expect when the sides switch. Most definitely. Siege, one of those very finicky titles when it comes to this because it's a complete mental change. There's a lot going on there when it comes to the different aspects of a map and you have to readdress everything all over again. You really can't play it the same way, obviously. So, Nave, gonna be beginning working his way out into the front courtyard. Does have bow and toe. The bathroom window open here. He's been looking pretty stellar so far on this line, able to find some cheeky kills every once in a while and just using that utility to its fullest advantage. But as of right now, it's obviously been Nafe and really NJR and Pamba that we've been seeing a lot of, uh, especially now. It was Nafe that previous map, kind of in the middle of the pack, but nothing to shake a stick at still. I think he still had 10 kills, but it was definitely the Pamba show as we'd seen alongside Canadian on Skyscraper. Getting themselves in really let the drones do the work for now at the very least. Nate's been rolling on through as you're seeing, catching out an F0, got rid of a couple of cameras as well, almost had the uh, motion sensor, but <laughs> immediately shot out, I imagine, I'm on the other side, I don't expect. Oh, we didn't see this last time now, but Panther's straight up. Arakazi was here last time, not here now, and he's just going to walk on through like, where is everyone? Most of them are upstairs, my friend. You found one at least lay down behind the kitchen counter, eating cake underneath, but you can have everything in this round of five and four, four dark, zero, and fear X. They've lost control of the site. They've got to fight their way back down here. But the vertical may work in Fear X's favor unless Dark Zero can unseat them. Rin just post box as soon as he tries to step anywhere near the site. Oh, well, you know, the verticality would assist if they had it open. That's the problem, Des. They don't have any verticality available to them up top. Just some very simple angles working in from the hatch. But this is looking like a dark zero round all over again. The writing's on the wall for Demic. He'll be able to get one, but that's a lot of health going the way of DZ. Naif, Pambazoo, and Canadian waiting Ugh. and chomping at the bit to take out this last member and transition to the defensive side. And they've got angle from double window basically the whole way through. It's just like, what do you even do here, right? Oh, like, he sees it. It's horrible. He, like, he knows uh -huh. he's there. He oh. gets his man, but he's got to find more than that here as well. Right sort of idea, but not That's enough it. time. Demic, it feels like the wrong time to be picking up kills, my friend. I won't lie to you. Is that half? 
completely dominant by Dark Zero. Five and one. And I think across outside of Demix's last couple of kills there, there were what? Maybe 12, 13 kills across six rounds of Fear X. An average of about two around. That gives you an idea of just how dominant it was. Yeah, most definitely. Fear X not really able to do too much with our defensive side here on Chalet. And it was a masterclass offense from Dark Zero. They were addressing things wholeheartedly and with solid strategy. I really appreciated, uh, I mean, even inside of this strategy, their ability to get that info game working into their favor and discovering that there's really only one person on site. And they quickly transition into this full-blown execute that Fear X cannot do a single damn thing about. Support shorty kills are always fun to see as well. Looks like I might have a reset here maybe in a moment. I'll do uh, see what the uh, admins say, folks, but just stay along with us here for a split second. Yep. The rehost has been confirmed, so we'll hop back in, but you know what the beauty of this is? This one's super, super easy for our, uh, our, our I almost said our operators, our spectators, or rather our uh, Easy for our operators. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So they'll <laughs> really be buying to... into the law here and calling <laughs> the players operators. <laughs> the, bad, the bad thing, too, is I was actually talking about our spectators. So <laughs> <laughs> our operators of the spectation machine. Uh, it's going to be super easy for them, though, because it's it's right down the middle. It's split half, so they can literally practically put anything on for Dark Zero scoreline as long as it meets five, and then you just got to give Fox one round. So we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> in pretty quickly here yeah not an awful lot to worry about there and again just pausing for a second with more reflection on that five and one you know we saw fear x being really competitive back on skyscraper but this as we expected is a very different ball game <laughs> I liked... <laughs> it's just like no stop. did you see that I, I saw him tap him and say don't but what was he see specific? he was talking tut, tut, tut. can't use those drone rehosts to talk guys we no. changed that rule Tech, uh, tis, tis, tis. <laughs> tech pause means no talkie. Not allowed. No talkie talkie. Which is horrible to be fair for players when there's a long like tech pause as well. And you have to sit there in absolute silence and you're you're not even meant really to look away from your screen. You're meant to stay facing forward and center so there's no kind of like collecting information, no gestures that you can get from your coach or other players on your team. A little bit of leniency sometimes afforded, but overall. Yes, you will get a slap on the wrist as we saw a second ago for speaking during a tech pause. Yeah, you can see the admin behind Dark Zero as well, making sure that they're not talking about the game. He was like, what conversation are you having? <laughs> All right, that's approved. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, talking about breakfast. Yeah, most definitely. Everything's going to be code worded now from here on out. <laughs> like, <laughs> why does DZ keep talking about the moon landing? Like, <laughs> Did they say they like lemon cheesecake? What? <laughs> Some weird stuff like that. Yep. Ketchup on cottage cheese. That's just weird. Like, <laughs> how would you even do that? All right. Moments away here, folks, from getting everybody in. Bo, just, you know, I mean, fashionably late, Bo. Maybe if you're paying attention to your screen, to fair, we can see you. I All think right. despite having done this for years and even winning a world title doing it, they joined in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the reason, so, so, so I'm going to break down the fourth wall a little bit for those of you at home. The reason why uh, tech pauses and rehosts can take a while sometimes it's not always strictly about re-entering the match settings. It can actually be getting players back in, in the right order because it's all tied up to player camps. It's based on the order they sit in on the desk. So if they're just dogpiling in and throwing themselves into any random order, they start getting messy. And that's not fun for anyone. Yeah, exactly. So that's don't, a... don't blame production. Blame the players when cams are wrong because it's normally down to them not joining in the order they've been told to join. Exactly, exactly. That's how we get those transition cams where it's like, why is Pam Bazoo Canadian? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm the IGL now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, that offensive half there from Dark Zero was truly disgusting. I, I love the different looks they gave. I love the different pacing that they utilized to really try and give Fox a hard time. And, uh, I mean, for Fear X, there really wasn't anything that was a big sweeping moment for them. Even the round that they ended up picking up, Dark Zero definitely had an opportunity to be able to put that one in the back pocket, too. I'm really curious, actually. I'm checking if... Crash's sheets have any light or insight for us? Uh, not the way that I hoped. Um, I was hoping to find out what their most played operators are. I know that Ace is their go-to most played. That's the case for a lot of teams, as you'd expect. Very strong yeah, operators still. I was curious to what level they run the Ying and whether or not that means they'll start drawing bands against them or against them for that operator. Because mm -hmm. as we've seen across both maps here, we spoke about it at the end of Sky. <laughs> Poor Fear X have been abused by flash grenades and by the Ying consistently 
throughout the attacking rounds of Dark Zero. To the stage that half the players when they die, don't, they can't see anything, they're full flashed. Yeah, Fear X are literally that flash meme on Twitter where it's like, <laughs> yes. hey, are, they're hitting sight, are you sure? <laughs> it's just white screen. White screen. <laughs> That's how I know, right? But I do think if like any team looking at this looks, although it's against Fear X, they could look at it and go, okay, they played it a lot there. Is that just a one-off? Is it they only really run that a lot against Fear X? Because they know it's a team they can sort of overwhelm in a very brute force way with a lot of flashes and they don't do it normally against more sophisticated opponents. Or if it's a trend they've seen across the competition, I do think you have to start banning it out because their use of it, to be fair to them, has been sublime. Oh, absolutely. I'm in full agreement with you right there. That was uh, some truly disgusting stuff, especially from Pambazoo. I mean, Pambazoo yeah. just constantly gunning down every opponent that they put in front of him. I think I saw him only miss like one opportunity that entire game with Ying, which is just actually insane so yes. this again goes to show you how incredible these players on dark zero are and that's before they even made these adjustments for nathan bow yes quite terrifying at the best of times i think dark zero has spoke about on this map historically been very very good at really cooking players alive with a sat on mezzanine with capital here over the side switch though the capital is being brought out by fear x it's a good boy running around on that operator here alongside What's become very popular for them, I'd say, the Blitz. They really like these shield operators, as we've seen throughout the series, running Ossa, Monty, and Blitz several times throughout Skyscraper's attacking half. That's not changing here on Chalet. Interesting set of affairs that were just built upon here for Fear X over on the far side for the uh, wall. Exactly what know what they want to do with this. Might use that as just an angle to be able to... <laughs> Please tell me you saw that. Yeah, are you okay? <laughs> three claymores <laughs> under that hatch down there. That is actually insane. They've oh got my. six. <laughs> they brought six in the round. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god! There's another one on the door! What, you, what is that? Dude! Oh my god. It's I've never it's laser art, okay? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have never seen something like that in my life. Wow. Um, okay. Well, nobody's flanking. I mean, I, I mean, I hope it works out for you guys, but I don't think it's going to be a thing in this round. That, that's the uh, that's the Oppenheimer claymore strat back there. <laughs> yeah. You step on that, the whole map just disappears. Yeah, Shally building just crumbles. That's it. Round over. Modern team. All right. Well, they're pushing in quite heavily from this trench side to the north. Not bothered with the front door at least for now. He's got to repel that angle, right? You'd hope so. I mean, not up there yet, but you'd expect that to change. Uh, comes in, blocks it off the bottom. Really nice use, actually, the smokes here as well to deny this hatch. We haven't seen this done very often. In it comes Arakazi being melted away by a miser. Just like, get off me! Shoves him away, but it's still going to be the blitz to fall first. A good hold so far by DZ. And now the bow's back on that angle. Methu is ready and waiting. They've dealt with it, but they cannot get rid of this evil eye that's still sat in the corner. Good boy with a nice kill on a nape, though. It's going to be a hard back and forth here in between he's these gonna two. Die, he's going to die to it. He's right over the top. Yes, constantly getting tagged up. Pampa's going to go down to Rin, though. And NJR has to try and occupy this evil eye to just constantly be that nuisance. Canadian, he's the third <laughs> player to step up inside of Kitchen. It's constantly been a trade back and forth, but they have once again occupied this space, and they will control this hatch. Yeah. And that, the hatch is not the one. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a bit of a death hatch, this game. Most definitely. Adian now on full transition, though. Back oh, downstairs to try and get an assist. Only Demet looked left at the court. Canadian retreating back down to side, but instead went hard right. And like that, NGR is going to get him down. That's two, the full. Make it three. So many times this series, we are seeing Dark Zero players go nuclear precisely when you need them to. I know there's. Virex shouldn't be throwing that. No. No, most definitely not. And I, I, you can see that sometimes it just comes down to that one piece of utility you didn't really consider. That evil eye caused yep. so many problems for Fear X. They can't try and put that case down. They need somebody to try and assist. And yeah, Dark Zero are giving up bodies on the hatch, but that round right there, that was NJR and the Alda in perfect transition on top of Maestro's utility usage. I mean, what a round from NJR. I, I get the idea from the Fear X there as well, was to stack all three players and push him from the same direction together, but again, I come back to Demic when he ran in through lobby, didn't look left, didn't see Canadian, yeah. full sprinting away from him to get down blue. If Demic had turned left and gone down blue and looked for a bit of a sidestab angle to make it not so easy for NGR to look at a doorway and hold down left mouse button, that could have been a very different outcome, and I, I praised Fear X for that previously and talking about how Mephi has been a backstab player for them at multiple points, not just back on Skyscraper, but across previous days as well. 
That seemingly has gone out the window with those final three players, and they've made it far too easy for Dark Zero to get the close. Well, now we set on the precipice of a 2 0 here for Dark Zero as they have made things look so unbelievably easy here yeah. on Chalet. For the most part, obviously, that last round a little mucky, I would say. I did like some of the considerations as well, Des, especially with the Capitao coming in there and smoking off Bo's angle for the hash initially. I mean, if that goes off without a hitch with that evil eye not being there, obviously, then that round more than likely goes Firax's way. But Dark Zero having that layered utility, just making things really problematic or the offense. Bo, does he want to step up? Oh. oh! Bo's gotten so unlucky on a lot of these swings. I've just been noticing that a lot of these transitions or a lot of these repeaks that he's had, he's constantly just getting his head knocked off. Here, that opens things up inside of office. Narakate is more than happy to take the invitation in the open door, straight through top floor. Trying to find someone to gun down, but at least here two have already gone. It's two on the side as well, to fair. Nate on his backside, oh but Pamba's converting as well. Arakaze! Getting a little bit focused on trying to complete no. the kill. What is going on? Damn it! That is not the time to be having a bit of a misclick, my friend. He's got three by himself to bring down. And I simply do not think it is going to happen. One of the quieter fraggers throughout this series. For Dark Zero, Skyscraper might have looked a little bit messy. But coming into Chalet, they've shown the prowess that many have expected of them coming into this tournament. Just feels like this is where it ends for Fear X. They'll have to face off against GK to have any hope of staying in this competition, and even then, it's a tall order. Reloading. It's definitely. Me and the rest of the gang, making sure that they don't get overzealous in this situation. Don't want to make it easy moment here for Demic. No looks, no aggression. Force Demic to try and work his way through the map and check every single corner around the way. Canadian gets him with the super shorty and puts Fox in the grave. Dark Zero, 7-1 on Chalet, folks, in a 2-0 victory. We expected that coming in. I think everyone would have said in their predictions, easy 2-0 for Dark Zero. The only real shining and redeeming factor there for Fear X was that first map. They did put Dark Zero to the test, and that will draw question marks around. Can Dark Zero figure their way out around all these difficult problems that teams may well throw at them coming into the playoffs? Crucial thing to remember for Dark Zero is with that 2-0, they are in a great spot to try and take that top spot away from G2 tomorrow. I think as it stands, G2 are on 12 points, DZ on 11. It is everything to play for, and the winner of that game, they bought, they get past the first round of the upper bracket that goes straight into the quarterfinals. I'm not going to be complaining if I get an auto buy into the quarterfinals of the Invitational. Oh, no, absolutely not. And uh, with that in mind, I mean, you can think just how big of a series we have awaiting us tomorrow in between these two teams. Why is Troy doing this, by the way? He's handshaking and everyone else is fist bumping. And so the players appear He's a gentleman. to fist bump, and they're like, oh, I've got to shake hands. And the next player comes on, they go to shake their hand, and it's a fist bump. But it's just like changing back and forth. Like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> he's the captain. He's got to shake hands, make sure everybody knows that he's a, a professional. And Canadian, definitely so. Professional grade here between him and Nave on the calls, especially on Chalet. Skyscraper, they really hope that's just a blip and something that they can address here uh, over the next 24 hours before trying to take things over to G2's camp. But who says we even get to that map at the end of the day? Dark Zero, though, once again, with a fantastic series, at least here on Chalet. And again, for me, it's the rounded team performance that really made it more than anything else. It wasn't like one player was shining. You might look maybe at Pamper and say, actually, he's had two brilliant maps. Just overall, he's the one who you've really seen stepping up and getting the most multi-kills. But I think everyone's had their moments. Well, maybe a little bit less, so a little bit quieter across the two maps than the rest. But the numbers don't lie. He was on the board. Everyone was contributing. And it was a good, well-rounded team performance. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, what else can you say, especially with a bounce back like that? DZ a little worrisome, again, when it came to that skyscraper map. But once they got into home ter ter uh, territory on their map pick, everything transitioned into a uh, pretty straightforward affair. And again, I'll come back to the main point I mentioned on that second map was the Ying. It was a staple for them in that series on the attacking side of things. Whether or not a ban in the, in the second map of that would have made a difference, I don't really think so, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I think teams will look at this, and if they've played it a lot throughout the competition so far, questions will be asked, do we give them that operator? Because they do look prolific with it. I'd argue more so than any of the team that I've casted so far, they look phenomenal with it. Yeah, especially just the way that they build up things around that, right? You have the Globals coming in with the Lion. You have these other tidbits of info working in with Grimm and things along those lines. And it's just so unbelievably annoying. I love this strategy from Dark Zero because it puts so much pressure on the defense. And at the end of the day, you're not even allowed to move. Exactly that. Horrific. 
And just to give you some stats so you can see how that last map really boiled down, as you can see, it was a bit of a cruising for a bruising from Dark Zero. Seven and one overall. Lots of high EPS ratings coming out. Naif on 175. And the entry story completely changed because on the last map we did turn around and say, that was actually the first time we've seen Fear X go positive on entry on a map here. It flipped the other way entirely, unsurprisingly, when a team has won 7-1. and one. Yeah, well, we needed your British boy pretty bad for this one, it seems. <laughs> it's Dave, top of the You heat. always need a British uh, boy. Of course, of course. Now, I've been very, very impressed with Nate throughout this tournament so far. NJR will be our MVP with an EPS of 132. Oh, quick. Woo! Check, check your stats you've got. See if any player on Fear X now would turn to being positive. Okay. Don't okay. take this away yet, production. Leave it there, please. We've got to look at this. Beep boop, beep bop. One second. Beep boop, beep boop, 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 beep boop. Where are we looking? We're going for groups. Someone was there. Someone was there. Uh, uh, cool. Is anyone there? Arax, was he negative? He was ne it? Yeah, he had a bad one. Minus 12. Good boy. What was he on? He was minus eight. He's still negative. Rin. Demic? <laughs> Rin's Rin? definitely negative. Rin was, ne Rin was negative. Uh, what about Mephi? Mephi was minus. Nah, they're all negative still. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought we had something, uh, Fear I thought uh, we had something. But uh, life hopefully, is pain. hopefully they got something for Geeke. But here you are. Soon, huh? This is what I was saying earlier. In terms of like round diff, G2 are still ahead by a few. But I imagine after that series tomorrow, it will be decisively favored one way or the other. But a classic EU versus NA battle here. The winner walks away with the top spot. And similarly, at the other end of the group, GK versus Fear X. Whoever wins that series, given how close the round difference is, will take four spot and survive. The loser will go home. And NIP are just sat there, like, fiddling their thumbs, like, well, we got nothing to do now. We good. Yeah, it's pretty wild, especially for Ninjas in Pajamas, because look at how even they've been playing, right? Plus one on round differential. That is insane, especially with <laughs> over 100 rounds This played. sounds really harsh to say, but like 4-1, like 4 on the other side as well. They are the literal definition of mid so yes, far. Yes, actually. <laughs> it is the battle of bang mid. in the middle. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, I mean, for them, it's not been the dream start to a competition. I think some were even worried they might lose out to Fear X, for example, but... They're sitting there pretty. It's not going to be like a dream march through like some other um, Brazilian teams are hoping to do. I think for them and loss, it's been a tough start to the competition overall. The thing is with NIP, you know, Tim says it all the time, they warm into a tournament. They will get stronger as it goes by. So don't think this counts them as being a middling team for the whole competition. That will change. Yeah, absolutely the case. And uh, I mean, what more is there to say? Dark Zero, an amazing series. Once they moved away from Skyscraper, obviously some worrisome moments here for our North American fans. But hey, Canadian and Nate apparently got it. They were able to batten down the hatches, be able to fight through that really difficult battle Battle that Fear X put up. So with that Carry in mind, my boy. yeah, man. With that in mind, I mean Fear X. I definitely think they still have something in the tank to be able to hopefully produce against Geek. A. Fingers crossed. Either way you look at it, both games in this group tomorrow are going to be a banger. Yeah. The only way I could possibly summarize it. I'm really excited to see both of those play out. I'm not even casting tomorrow, so I get to sit and watch in the green room and be like, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to stand down there and just watch DZ and G2 go at each other because you can imagine. What the lip is going to be like tomorrow, it's going to be crazy. Oh, especially like, I, I, I want you guys to realize this as well. Today was a very quiet day for Canadian. He didn't, he really didn't say anything at all. You know what I mean? I can tell you tomorrow, that is not going to be the case. It's, it's not quite fun, like shouting down someone that you've like, beaten into submission though, right? True. Like you feel like, oh, I'm like kicking a puppy now. This feels bad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not surprised there wasn't a lot of it. They got the job done and that was the most important mm -hmm. part. Well, I'm glad that I didn't curse him with a jacket because there for a second, <laughs> I was like, ooh. Ooh, it might have been my bad. <laughs> Would have been painful. Either way, didn't curse them. And that is that series done and wrapped up. We'll throw out to a break ahead of our next series. But before then, here's the Intel play of the game. And push his way in while the defense is focused on hot and cold and the repel. On the Bjorka drone is going to pick that up though, stun out, and now they are fully away. A quarter has turned his attention towards stock door, and that's going to make things a little bit more difficult for Forrest. We see one of the shields destroyed. Second one goes down. J9 O manages to pick up Woogie Man, and here comes the push. J9 O's walked up spiral for three. They've tried that third angle, and it's worked. Yes, he's rotating around one versus three. He's got a lot of work to do here. Diffuser starts going down. He manages to find Ash, and could we see a second one? versus three of the game unlikely now after Yas takes an absolute ton of damage he's trying to work his way back in from banana but the problem that he's got is that SSG know exactly where he is Forrest after planting that diffuser gets the kill onto Yas 
and that's SSG taking another successful attack. Oh, that's such a massive gamble from SSG, but one that's perfectly understandable. The utility they've tried to use inside of the site hasn't really cleared it out, and they're going in with a 4v4. They weren't able to have that advantage and feel comfortable as they push on in the CEO. So that call from Forrest with Diffuser as well. Say, okay, we have 40 seconds about when he started going for that rotate. We've cleared out stock. We know it's clear. We genuinely know the positions of these players. We'll try to push on in. I'll apply pressure to the backside, and then either you guys can push front or you can rotate as well. And Jay and I know just goes in, face checks Woogie Man. And while I do like the rotate in terms of the confidence with which SSG engaged it, I still can't overstate how much that came down to a couple key players pre getting lucky pre-fires or intelligent and well-informed pre-fires, but still with a bit of luck nonetheless and winning 